the bowels of One Half Radio Plaza at Life Media Studios. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Real Country Radio. Congratulations, Detroit. You can be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. The homicide tool has reached a nice even 750. Details on the latest leveling from Police Sergeant... Coming up now, we're going to start off the set with... ...in the morning. The Hitless Tigers could use this guy's talent. Have you had time to get ready? <clears throat> I don't waste any time getting ready. I stay ready. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to, I think this is sidetrack number 117. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of folks lined up for you tonight. We've got uh, Mike and Mary Kayla spending in their inheritance team are with us. And the folks who run the Indiana Pulling League are also in the house. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, how is everybody tonight? Good. Very good. Doing good. Good. Well, where do we want to? Start? I undisappeared. You un? Yeah, you Adam undisappeared. I'm oh, back. Hey, from, it's about damn time. Back from Keystone. Had a boy. Yeah, buddy. You did. You 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 got. You weren't cornerstoned, so they didn't plant you. No, no, we did all right. No. <laughs> great time down there. They put on a hell of a show this year. So. No, it's good to hear. Great, great, like. great time. <clears throat> All right. So who wants to go first? Who do we want to? Uh, who do we want to um, put in the firing? You know, in the in the firing squad first. I think we should. I think we should pick on the one who was, um, you know, taunting us with a laugh there. <laughs> How are you guys? It's been a while since I've seen you guys. It's been good, ever yeah. since I've seen you. Doing good. We've just been trying to get the tractor back and motor back in and grinding some tires tonight. We had to hurry up and go and get a shower and get out here and tune in for get the rubber off us and look halfway presentable tonight. But yeah, it's all good. I just hope you weren't using that circular saw behind you to do it. Well, you know. <laughs> oh, that one, no. <laughs> we have specialty tools. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, no, so, um, so I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, we wanted you guys to come on here. I, Hans had the big announcement there from the yeah. from the Louisville Farm Show yeah. um, about announcing going overseas, and you guys uh, got yeah. people as well. So, tell me, tell tell everybody a little bit about how that kind of went down and what you're looking forward to, time frames and all that good stuff. Well, Eric was over here last year with some people and they went to Hansi's shop. And they wanted him to come over, you know, asked him if he'd be willing to come over. And he said, yeah, he, uh, he, he would. And so uh, it went on a year and then they got reached out to him again and wanted to know if this was a year. And he, well, I think according to Hans, he said, well, he didn't know about this year. And then finally it's like, yeah, this, you better do it now. So they asked him if he wanted to bring the thumper along, and he says, no, 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 no. Um, so I guess talk led to one thing led to another, and between him and Roy, and Roy helps us out too, and he's Roy Pettigrew's on Hansi's crew. And they got talking with Eric and the powers of B, and they, I don't know if Eric realized that we were in the same town as Hansi or not, but they run it past Eric, and he says, oh my God, yeah, we'll put it past the board. And uh, the board was all in favor of it, and they said, well, yeah, we we'll can split a container with them. And, so they reached out to me. We were set to be in Toma that weekend, that week. And Roy says, well, you want to give up Toma for that? I said, well, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we were over there with Joey Ader in, what, 2000? <laughs> I believe so. It was before 2018, COVID. 2018, before COVID, we went with him and his crew and uh, made a lot of friends there. So, yeah, we'd love to go back. So one thing led to the other. The committee met and says, yeah, we'd love to have you guys. So that's kind of how it went. So since then, we've been, Anzi and I have been, planning airfare and containers with a container crew over there and um, how we're going to get everything in a container and everything that goes along with it. So it's been pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you guys obviously went over with Joe um, with the Unlimited and his Mini, and that was for the for the o or Ahoy pull in the yes, end, it was. Yeah. correct? So, yeah. like, so like I my one question that I had, like obviously you've pulled at the biggest polls around here. 
mm -hmm. and you've been over there like is it any different is it the same is it like interaction wise is it how is it i mean I, uh, mary, it's wild mary and i'll tell you the same thing i mean they have music and the people are just crazy and you know not like buffalo bills football drunken crazy right. i mean the yeah. people are just <laughs> They're, until this year and, you know, <laughs> and they're yeah. having a blast and they're they, you know the music is playing and they have you know very well-dressed girls that are handing out you know trophies, trophies and handing out bouquets of flowers and kissing and everybody and i mean it's a the the champagne they're spraying it around they have a nice podium it's, it's a lot more high energy it is, it is. Uh, <laughs> they like for us i mean bowling green obviously is one of the highlights for us every year yep and mm -hmm. which not not to take anything away from any of the states not bowl, at all not there's at a all. darn lot of energy over there and from my kind of research on this mata weekend it's crazy i mean they're talking like twenty five thousand people a day and um, some of the stories about the beer and the, you know the, the people and all this i mean it looks we're really excited to be going I mean, yeah. it looks, like quite an event. And I just wanted to go and spectate. I said, you know, Hansi is going. I just want to go spectate. Yeah. Well, it turned into this. Yeah, we were planning on going just to hang out and watch <laughs> with them guys. And then this came up. So we were honored and kind of humbled to be able to go. Absolutely. I've heard that event described as it's a party where a tractor pull breaks out. Yeah. I, I yeah. kind of agree with you, Adam. I mean, it's like from every all the ones I've watched, I think we've watched a lot. You've watched a lot and, of them. Uh, it's like the after party and the, just the, the energy is just incredible. Yep. I mean, it's, I can't wait to be part of it. And they're blasting know? a lot of music. And yeah. There's just, there's a lot going on. Yeah. If you yeah see, there's, a, there's a pull and shed in Ontario and their yeah. shirts, the one year it said, uh, come for the pole, stay for the party. <laughs> there we go. Type of deal. Yeah. 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 Right. And they have three tracks, which Bowling yeah. Green has yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. Three tracks is going to be pretty. Pretty interesting, 60 classes. Right, yeah, 60 classes and over <laughs> 600 got, competitors. I mean, it looks like it's a yeah. real. So, have you have you seen any of the hype videos that those guys have uh, that those guys have put out recently? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, I think we've seen all. I, of them. I think we did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. if, yeah. It looks pretty cool. If you haven't done so yet, find one of the photo albums. Um, they're huge. Like, I mean five six hundred photos oh wow. just, click, okay. just click through a few of them i'll tell you what they have some really damn talented photographers working on that oh, staff. God, it looks like they it. do yeah. some amazing stuff yeah yeah it's uh the whole event just looks awesome i mean the track looks nice i mean the the vendors the people uh in the hospitality they're showing us i mean the, the, the eric that we've been talking to over there the, the announcer uh I don't even want to attempt to butcher his last name, but he's been just incredible. Uh, very hospitable. We we're, I guess, to finish your question, we we're we we're going to container it on or around May 1st with Hansi and at Hansi's farm. And uh, then we wait bye bye to it until we fly over there June 10th. And um, Eric is putting us all up over there in his house or some neighbors. I, I don't even know. We're all staying together. We're all That's staying together. And there's 26 That's of us. Awesome. Yep. So I guess we're all sitting down to breakfast each morning and, you know, all together. We're Team uh, USA. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, we're excited. So, yeah. Do we, uh, do we right. know what port the container leaves from? We Not are yeah, at, at, at the <laughs> risk of hearing the answer. Um, we are going, to my knowledge, we're leaving and going to Jersey and then from Jersey to Rotterdam. Hmm. And then, they, of course, they're going to take it from Rotterdam down to Mata and when we arrive or they'll have a set off with a crane and it's supposed to be right there and they got a vip tent for us and tables and chairs tables and, and chairs all and kinds of stuff not that we need a refrigerator for anything i think we need ice though they're not big on ice yeah. over there yeah. gotta keep the beer cold somehow yeah, yeah. right yeah right. in case there was one it, it was something else when we were there with joe ader because there was a bar at the hotel and of course there was other bar stops here and there and they would order like 12 beers and they'd all sit on the bar. And when you got down to the last two sitting on the bar, you ordered another 12. And, you know, this is just, they, they're not big on ice. You go out for lunch, you got to ask for ice if you want, you know, iced tea or soda or whatever yeah. you want with ice. They don't, they just, it's different. Yeah. 
It's a beautiful country, though. We did get to see a little yes, of it last time. Uh, for those of you guys that have not been there, it's uh, when we went with Joe in 2018 or whatever that was, we did a whirlwind tour. We were there four days, and it was one day they pulled it ahoy. And we had a whirlwind trip to Germany. And we got over to the airport after a lot of delay. And they came out and threw a set of keys to rental cars, and we just I mean, literally 100 mile an hour through Germany to the Gloss Planet. We stopped and seen the Green Monster and team and <clears throat> Lombardas and um, it was really cool. But by the time we got to Germany at 8.30 that night, it was time to lay down. It was, it was a exhausting day, but it was fast and furious. So we're looking forward to going back for a week or more. Nice. So we're going to, so you're staying a little bit longer. You can take it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it'll, it'll be, you guys know how it goes. I mean, we'll get there on, actually we fly out at 11.45 on the 10th, which is Monday. And we get into the Amsterdam at 1.10 their time. And they're picking us up, <clears throat> excuse me, with big buses running us down next time. So the time will go fast. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. How many, and, and it's just you guys and... We got... Um, Anzi's crew, he's got taken a lot of family with him. And, well, he's uh, got five, four or five guys. Yes, he's got quite a big crew. So he's got yeah. about 20 going with him. So we, Eric said we got a room for about 26. So we had to keep our, our team kind of limited. So we got a half a dozen of my son, my crew chief, Brian, Kale, and his wife, Alicia, and, and uh, another guy from us, uh, Hansi invited, but he's going with us and helps us, uh, Joe Lawton and his wife, Sarah. And then... Uh, Mike Mary and I, I of course. Or the but, six. Yeah. Yep. But I did hear tell we do have one of my sponsors is going to make an appearance there. He's going over my major sponsor. So um, that's going to be kind of nice. Yeah. So. He's going on his own. Yeah. Who is your major sponsor? Is that the guy sitting between the two of you? Uh, no, actually, uh, no. he's a, he's a silent sponsor. Um, ah, okay. He's one we'll of ask you to give him up, but no, no, no. He's a silent sponsor and he's been awesome. Uh, he was a former sponsor with a business, but he kept on since he sold his business, and we really appreciate it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see Mike Janice there. Yeah. Now we can see it. But no, all our sponsors have been awesome. Uh, we have, of course, Mike Janice, if you're looking at the blower, we haven't put back on the track yet because we're still waiting for the blower to show up. Maybe tomorrow. We got a new blower coming and a new hat, whatnot. So, uh, but uh, we got hybrid building solutions as long as I'm on that. Uh, yeah, local. please do. A local company, Mary Louise and Brian, got a, they do a lot of salt type of covering, oh, uh, cover all sheds and yep. whatnot. And they've been just incredible uh, to our team, helping us out every year. And and, and we got, uh, and of course, Mike Janice and all our boys over there, they've been incredible working with us the last five years. Uh, Matt Martin helps us out with Lake Effect powder coating, doing stuff for us. and. Uh, Angry Duck, we got on board with Kurt, Kurt Cartloff out there with Angry Duck that does all our merch. And they've been just amazing uh, as far as the stuff they're doing for us. We got them working on some uh, event shirts that we're going to have a limited amount of them over there to sell. I'm sure there's going to be people who want them, but then we're going to put them on our site at Angry Duck. So, and we yeah. got Adam. Adam does polish and Adam, for us. Adam helps welding. us out welding. As a matter of fact, I just answered him tonight about something out. Uh, we're surrounded with really good people. We are, I mean, success is great, but we are surrounded with really good people. Yeah, that's awesome. So, Adam, are you planning on, uh, are you bringing polishing gear and, and, and a welder and throwing that in the in the container or no? We or might have to. I, yeah. got a, I got a spare machine. We might as well just throw it in there just in case. Right. You know? Well, you know, guys, I, I will say <clears throat> we are really honored that Adam is going to go. I mean, yeah. Adam, yeah. as you guys all know, does awesome work. I mean, not to mm -hmm. take anything away from any other photographers in the U.S., but Adam does great work, as do most of them, if not all of them. But yeah, He's kind of hometown, too. He's to have Adam go along as a friend yeah. and the quality photographer he is to take, you know, it's kind of like our personal photographer. And Hansi and I was kind of joking about it. And, yeah. You know, it's just, it's really kind of nice to have him go and him and Missy to go and enjoy things and be part of the crew. 
I mean, I am beyond excited. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be. I mean, yeah, it cannot get here any quicker. You yeah, know. right, right. That's for sure. But don't, don't wish away your summer. No, I mean, that's no, no. Right? Yeah, yeah. Is it, is <laughs> oh, I found that? Yeah. Holy crap, that's sweet. Oh, wow, that's, that's impressive. impressive. We just got a motor dropped at the chassis oh. last night. It's like, oh, God, we got our diligence to do it here. But I've, uh, I've looked yeah. that up. I've looked that up before because I was curious, like how far hotels That's were awesome. when we were. Yeah, like, I've never buddies and stuff were talking about it. I was on I was there like, trying. That, that I was a... trying to find it, and I I couldn't find it. I looked for a bunch, but um, that sweet. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am like I said. I am stoked to go over there. If you Google I've Earth, been, uh, I've been Google talking Earth. to Dennis Voss about it, and a couple of the photographers from over there. So yeah, definitely make sure, excited. Make sure uh, you get uh, some of the camper pictures. Because I think that's some yeah. of the most unique campers that ever go to a tractor pull. They look like it. Uh -huh. Yeah, they look like it. I don't think their yeah. campgrounds on the level of Bowling Green by the looks of it, but it sure looks like they have a lot of <laughs> unique stuff out there. Yeah. Yes, it might be on the level in the mornings. Yeah, when people are trying to you know stumble out and <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, crawl to back to life. Yeah. We yeah. camped there for many years. Yeah, it's much quieter in the pits, I must say. Yeah, I imagine. I wonder if uh, uh, Charles, you pop that on the screen. Does it? Uh, uh, does the map have Google Street View? Can you drag the little dude you down can. to the? Um, oh, we checked. Yeah. It off. It's on this Eric's farm, and it's, you can. You know, let me check Google yeah. Earth and see what that does. Yeah, you can look at the three tracks, and yeah. obviously, there's not nothing set up now, but it's all there. Huh. It would be really cool to see that when it's all set up, and yeah. you know have the satellite fly over there yeah i mean it'd be the it'd be the mother of all strokes of luck but well, i think i think ryan you're gonna see uh you're gonna end up being fortunate enough to see a lot of it with adam going so that's gonna be cool i'm i'm banking on it yep that's <laughs> make, make sure cool. you've got uh, your adapters to go from a u.s power yes. plug into yes. uh, your pn oh really yes yeah. So you're, you're going to want to get adapters, otherwise you're not going to have very long camera batteries. We, we found that out the hard way when we got into Germany before hmm. like, last time. We get up to the room, and there were some guys going out for cocktails, and Mary and I are dragging ass. And I, we drove all day through Germany. I mean, I was driving. I drove overseas before, but literally 100-plus miles an hour. And we were whipped. And we got in our room, and it's like, first of all, we couldn't even make the lights come on. Because you need the, the key you card. You need to leave your and, key card and we, in. We tried the calling down and, for the and translating, and finally we figured out after an hour how the hell to even turn the lights on. And uh, <laughs> that is like you go to plug in something. It's like, oh, geez, what the heck is this? I never knew that. Yeah, you we know? were, we brought up after this. Not that time. That was a very time. Yeah. No. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. <laughs> Cool. Wow. It's a huge place. Man, where do they funnel people in and out of that place? I don't know. There's a couple driveways that go into the pits and then the spectators and whatnot, but it's it's a small town. What what always got me was how narrow the roads are. Yes. Right. You yeah. know, I mean we think of some of the haulers we have over here in like you you right. wouldn't be able to make to right. pass on the road together, basically. Hey, hey, oh, man, can you imagine Steve Neat trying to get the old bootlegger rig <laughs> into that joint? <laughs> Good Jeez. grief. There would be crops harmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to touring Eric's farm, too, because we didn't do any farm tours last time we were there. We, we saw some. And, you know, my, my roots are in farming and so I really want to see how they do it there. Does Eric have a big farm? I don't know. Compared, you know, you're we're in Wyoming County. I mean, anything that's that's small around here is a thousand or fifteen hundred cows. Yeah. You yeah. know, the, yeah. the two little farms with a hundred head don't exist anymore in New York. No. Or most of the country. And um, over there, I don't know what's going on. You know, I don't know if they have big farms, little farms. Right. I'm interested to find out. Yeah. His wife owns a creamery. I know that. I don't know if it's associated with his farm or not, but he's milking the cows and she's processing the milk. So it'll be interesting to tour that. Yeah, that's very cool. 
Yeah. Adam, if you're involved in those tours, we want to see some photos of that stuff too. Oh, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you will. <laughs> when we went driving through, you really can't tell what you're looking at as far as size of farms or anything like that. We, as he said, we're going pretty fast, but they, the, the barns are generally built out of stone. They look really old. They're really cool looking. Real pretty cool. You know, it's it's um, pretty neat. Adam, what, what Ryan meant to say is we we uh, fully expect a Clarkson Farms episode. <laughs> yes, yes. I love that series. Find, find somebody with a Lamborghini. Yes. And, and Mary. It's way overkill can, for anything you guys can behind it. shove Adam in it. Right, right. Video <laughs> camera on. And let's <laughs> let's have Adam be Clarkson. For, what, could, what could possibly go wrong? Yes. A lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That could be fun. That might be worth renting one, Adam. That might be kind of fun. Yeah. Hey, might as well, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do it up. Yep. So how many uh how many are typically in the mini rod class there? Do you guys have any idea? I don't. Uh from what I've looked, I, I I'm expecting twenty or more. Okay. So a good so a good solid class. Yeah, I think it's going to yeah. be a hell of a class. Uh, well, we met we guys want. when we were there for for uh, oh, with Joe. That was a big. Class. We met. There was guys from Belgium. There was guys from yeah. Germany. There was guys. From, you know, they they travel amongst the countries the way we travel amongst the states here. So yeah, um, they, some of them travel far. They got to get on a ferry and then drive yeah. miles, yeah. and they have quite the trip to get there. Some of them. Yeah, that it's it's really wild to me to see, and that's the thing about that mini class over there is is yeah. it's it's got so wide open rules. Yes, as far as I know, you can. Well, I mean, it does. I mean, double mags. We and... just we just <clears throat> picked our motor up from Brian Knox, and we were talking with Brian. And I you know once we got over the thrill of oh my god we're going over there that's going to be so great and it's like oh my god holy shit these guys are yeah, running we're gonna 1871 us. blowers we're running 14 we're running a little itty bitty single mag they're running twin mags and brian's like ah you'll be fine he said you guys will run that. so but they got a little bit of everything in the class so yeah that'll make it that'll make it fun that'll make them that'll for sure make it exciting yes yeah, we just want we want to go put on a good A to B pass like everybody and and yep. uh, enjoy the moment. But it's like you know we're certainly going to put our A game on and do the best we can. Well, they love their full pulls over there too. I mean, yeah. it's not That's unusual true. to have have ten or ten or more that are going to go twice. Yeah. Well, now we we have to uh, we of course we can't ship alcohol or Hansi can't take diesel with them over there either. So we have to source it out over there, which. Hanji's got a friend. I can't think of who it is over there. It's a big uh, red guy in case I age, you know, and he's hooking them up with diesel and our friends with the Lamada teams over there. They're hooking us up with plenty of alcohol and anything else we need over there. So we're grateful for them guys. But uh, So it's going to be a little different because we can't have all our tools and <clears throat> excuse me resources that we normally have. But Hopefully yeah. we won't need a lot of them. So it's going to be like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, you think the mini is small, but Hansi has to take the tires off of his tractor because it's too wide. Sure. He's going to have his tires. We get, we need two sets of tires. He'll have his tires off and different tires on just for the ride across the, right. the ocean. And then, you know, not even to mention, you got to have a support vehicle. Ours is smaller than his, so we're using our support vehicle, but we got to make sure that he's got the tools that he needs right. um, on our support vehicle. So, and then, you know, we'll have to weasel it all together. I don't know how that's going to work, but okay. like a big game of Tetris, I think. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That would be an interesting time lapse video. <laughs> hang, a girl, hang a GoPro in there and just make yes. sure it's well lit. <clears throat> Yeah. I don't know if I want to, though. <laughs> there might be some choice words. You never know. Well, that's, I mean, that's fine if we just do, I mean, if you do a, a GoPro and just have it take a photo every 10 seconds, right? Yeah. Photos right. don't talk. So, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's so true. You, can yell, you can yell at him all you want. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I. No, we already got that figured out. I promised I'm going to be there and take pictures and provide no advice. Yeah. I'm just going to just yeah. 
be there for moral support. Take care. <laughs> Fair enough. You is can it, bring a radio and you can you can do what they're doing here with the DJ. You can provide the yeah, soundtrack, yeah, the yeah. motivational noise. Yeah, I'll be practicing up for this. I mean, you, you don't see anything like this at Bowling Green. No. This is this is the craziness. Well, and America wouldn't work. have the America wouldn't have the foggiest idea how to react to this. They that's really true. wouldn't. I don't that's either. True. But some of them slides that you're showing there, and just check out the tent they got there. I mean, I don't even know that how long is that tent is. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, someone's having an altar call moment. I haven't watched. I don't think I've seen this one. I've seen. I remember seeing the one for twenty two. Yeah, we seen yeah, that. It was it was pretty intense and it was really well done. But I mean, it looks like everybody just loves the aspect of pulling and partying, and you know, like Bowling Green, everybody gets along, and it just looks like they're having a good old time. Yeah. And they hand out some pretty nice trophies and cups too. We've kind of gotten away from that, which, you know, you can only put up so many right, trophies. Right. What kind of, what kind of trophy, if you were, if, if you were going to run a poll, what kind of trophies and awards would you guys give out? Well, I don't know. If you ask me, I used to race cars in the eighties and we stacked up quite a lot of hardware back then. And Sunset it got pitched or whatever. Yeah, get rid of it, these. I'm it, sick of looking Mary got sick of hearing me say, I wish I had the freaking money instead of the trophy. So, you know, uh, but nowadays it, nobody gets rich at pulling anyway. And, you know, so <laughs> you, you might as well have something you could brag to your grandkids. About well, your, that's the theory anyway. Cool. I know there are some people trying to change that, but yeah, yeah that's okay. That's yeah, okay. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's the way it is. I, I don't know. Some of the stuff we reflect on, you know, like we got, uh, um, Maumee Valley Pullers out Wansi on. We we started pulling out there when we first started. We we always done good there. And the first year we got like fourth. Next year was third. Next year was second. Or I don't know if we went. We went with them last year. We won it. And it's all the little plaques hanging in the trailer. And it's kind of nice to reflect on. Go, oh, boy, we did have a little bit of progress here, you know. Yeah. So, but then somebody else might tell you, ah, they don't care to people. Yeah. So I guess if I was running the poll, I'd probably try to do both. Richard, Zach, what do you guys give out? For what? Which class? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you guys do you guys have any shows that um, on the on the schedule that where promoter makes something or you know, I mean we've all seen what Jeremy Wagler is capable of doing for his end of the year deal with, you know he'll make a billet wheel. Um, you guys got anybody who's who have ever you know started brandishing the welder and started making trophies or doing anything like that? Uh, the only trophies we've made are for ones <laughs> people have done something bad. <laughs> okay. We have a couple of twisted shafts. We have a, a floating trophy now that if you uh, have a really bad launch or something and break something. It gets parts get added to it, and then it gets passed along. Yeah. I'm doing it right now again, but I have seen I'm that trophy. With it eventually, Mary, if we give you an address, you want to send some parts from. Never mind. Oh sure, I can do that. Well, I, I've got some. In I the... told you I was going to pick on you once. <laughs> That's it. I've got some in my hemi garden that hang out there, but we've done things for our sponsors with pistons and stuff like that, just to give them something. You know, thanks for your support. Yep. So something that somebody can put on a desk. Yes. And it may it may turn into a paperweight, but when they look at it, they think I helped with that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I like that. I like that. What is this? okay, so comments we haven't popped any comments on here. I'm just gonna pop a weird one on here and I want you all to react to it. <laughs> Discuss amongst away. yourselves. <laughs> I know what that's about. You know. There's a few of us, um, Lindsey Campbell and I. Lindsey Campbell uh -huh. tipped over my yep. crash. And yep. then there was a few other tip overs that in the last, you know, season or so. And yeah. so they've just, they've determined that's the fainting <clears throat> goat award. And we're supposed to get t-shirts, but people keep tipping over. So we never get a total count. So I don't, 
you know, it might just be something we're going to talk about. Ray, no mini rod driver ever does that at a show I'm working in the future because it will get brought up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Fainting goat. Jeff Hertz got one. Yep. And, yep. and, um, oh, geez. Oh, what's his name? Um, well, uh, Tyler. Ty Miller. Oh, Ty Miller. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think, actually, I think his crash was worse than mine because he came down on his nose. I didn't come down on the she's nose. Going, she's going with that. She, she is going with that all day. I, his we'll looked, allow her. We'll allow that. Yeah. It, it looked worse, I thought. And I didn't go to the hospital. I didn't even have a bruise. Nope. He ended up having to go to the hospital. She's a tough yeah. old feet and goat. Yeah. That's right. Tight belts. That's my secret. I'm part of that seat. I'm part of that unit. You know what you guys could do for that? You could have somebody design a patch. You know, like, and that way, because then you can order their one size fits all. You can order 50 yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, when, if and when that happens the next time, after we make sure they're okay. We start giving them hell, and we, we yeah. make a, uh, you know we make a point of, of you know some degree of pomp and circumstance as we give them the fainting goat patch. It's like the two hundred mile an hour club, you know. Yeah, that's right. You that's know, right. and and maybe it's a badge of honor, maybe it's not. Yeah. But you know, something fit, but and it's and it's a heck of a lot cheaper, and it fits in a box yeah. as opposed to like seven boxes. Mm. Yeah. But we don't want it. We don't. We we only want the one patch. We don't want any more. Of them. No. Yeah. I don't. Just as as you, as you're handing it to them, just simply say, "You'll appreciate this more later." Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's true. But I wasn't even sore the next day. I was astounded by that. Yeah, we're kind of astounded by that too. I think that's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. And I got shook. Uh, we tried those. Um, we tried a set of tires once that were just giving everybody fits and joe ader had two sets of them and he said you know what you're lighter than i am so why don't you just try these and we tried them and they would they would kind of compress and then after you got out a little ways they 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 just you know they'd like they they balloon up and they'd shake you and it was a real quick shake it was like three shakes just like that and uh we were at bowling green and i took off and it did that and um i ended up getting out of the throttle because it was pretty violent and the guy with the flag that was up ahead of me came running back to me and he stuck his head in the cage and he said how many fingers I said three he said are you all right I said yeah I'm fine are you sure yeah I'm fine well then the next day I had a couple of bruises yeah. but we mm-hmm. didn't have um pads on the belts at that point so the buckles were not in a good spot on my collar roll yeah so we padded, padded the the belts after that made a difference, but I had a couple of bruises on the legs too. And th- that shake, you don't think it's a violent shake, but you know, he was watching it. He, he thought it was. Mm-hmm. How long have you guys been pulling? How long have you been driving Mary? Uh, 2017, I believe. We, we bought the chassis at 17 and I think our first full season was 18. Okay. 18. Okay. Is this six? Yeah. Not very long. But never, never anything before that. No, you just no. decided one day that you were going to strap yeah. onto a, a three thousand horsepower and let's just <laughs> well, go for a ride and see what it's happens. A little what. bit of a story, but technically it... he was supposed to be driving, and we said we'll share the driving duties. And then I said, no, you drive the first season, and when you get it all figured out, then I'll I'll drive the second season. And the first time we crossed the scales, he said, no, nope, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. Can't get enough no. front end weight. I'm too big in the seat. You're just going to be the driver. And well, we had it all set up for him. We bought it off for Richard Peters. Yep. And Rick is a smaller gentleman, you know, so Mike had to have the cage made higher and yep. make all the arrangements so that he would fit. And we went to um, Memphis. Memphis. Yep. We rode with Irv Clark. And um, anyway, they go. They went and weighed in, and I didn't go along. And he came back, <laughs> and he said, well, he said, this isn't going to work out. Did too. you bring all of your gear and i said yes i did and he said well you're going to be driving your baby. so you know i know nothing about it neither did he and i get all buckled in and i go to take off and the thing's kind of bouncing around and of course your arm's way up here and you know it's at the top of the handle which is where i thought your arm was supposed to be so my arms up like this and as it's about my arm you know and it's you know it's not good so i got out of it in less than 100 feet 
and um, went to the end to redo it again. What happened was my belts loosened up, so I was bouncing around too. So, you know, oh. I couldn't control anything. And so they fixed the belt because it had been pulled through the back of the seat, so I wasn't belted at all. And um, they got that all straightened out. And then somebody said, you know, get your arm in a place where it's more um, fixed. You don't have to hold on at the top of the, the throttle, wherever it's more comfortable and keep your arm fixed and keep your, you know, so that you're actually, your arm is in full control, so to speak. Oh, good suggestion. Yeah. And then Joe Ader told me to keep my feet on the pedals. I was driving like I drove farm tractors all my yeah, life with my yeah. feet down on it, you know, like yeah. you drive an H or an M or yeah. whatever. And he said, no, nope, get your feet on the pedals. That way you can react more quickly. And, you know, uh, Joe gave us a lot of pointers over the first well, yeah, year. We, he watched every run. He critiqued every run. When He'd we started, me. that was quite a deal because Er Clark's a very good friend of mine. He pulls two-wheel drives up here locally. Yeah. And Joe has been a good friend forever. And then Joe jumped on to help me out a lot. And uh, it was the funny thing, because he always kept, you know, we're building this. We don't know. I mean, I used to pull farm stock stuff and race snowmobiles and dirt bikes and, you know, cars. We never did this. And so Irv's telling, or uh, Joe's telling me, he says, well, don't, don't give up on the cheeseburgers yet. You know, you'll be, you'll be okay. And then when we scaled into Memphis, it's like, no, we're not going to be okay. And there's a little weight difference between her and I don't know if you can notice Just that. Just a little. Not, I know <laughs> that happens, you know. About 20 pounds heavier. <laughs> but so finally, that's what I said. I said, well, that's your baby. You're running it. So yeah. from there on in, and we, that was our first chassis. And then we ended up updating that one to a, a Ewing chassis. And then that was the one we trashed in Florida. And yep. Then we went to Modern. Modern Brad out to Modern. Mm -hmm. to Dandy. And, and uh, it's been all uphill ever since. It's been really good. Yep. You, you mentioned the arm movement. Do you use the fire suit straps on your arms for, for limiting movement at all? No, no. I The way that this chassis is built, because Brad built it to fit me, I can tuck my arm right in there and have my elbow right tight against my body, and then you just got, you know, this much of your arm. Like if you watch Bruce Slaw, he looks like he's arm wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he does. That's, that's his stance with his arm, but yeah. that's where he's comfortable. Yeah. And you know everybody's kind of got their own way to brace brace their arms so that you don't bounce around, and it's all I guess a personal personal thing. Can you imagine? Just because I saw him make a comment earlier, I'm I'm going to throw him under the bus. Can we all imagine if AJ Vargo had a mini rod? Because he would actually hold the throttle handle up on the top because he drives a he drives a semi. You know that's the way you do it, right? Right. He'd have, and you know, his his helmet would be in the shape of a flat bill, and oh yeah, it'd be awesome. Hey, <laughs> you got to work on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But anyway, that's how it started. We so it's eighteen, and uh, that was our first full year. And the first full year, we ran everything in Region Two. Yeah. And I don't know. And I always said that to Joe because now we're. I think to my knowledge, we're the only blown mini in New York State. I to my so. knowledge. And Joe was, and I were two, ours are two. And I just figured the mentality of why you build a blow mini rod in New York State. We were traveling 14, 13, 14, 15,000 miles the first year. Yeah. We ran everything on Region 2, Michigan, you know, Indiana, Ohio, everything. And it was a long year. Yeah. I mean, we did very good, but it, it was. And working full time yeah, and, you know, yeah. running home well, as fast as you can to get back to work. And by the end of that summer, I thought I was going to meet myself coming out the door. Well, some of the nights we were in Michigan, 10 hours away or 12 hours away. And, yeah. And, you know, of course, I ain't got to tell you guys about Pullet family. And, you know, the hot dogs would come out and cocktails come out. And all of a sudden, the next thing, the sun's coming out. And it's like, hey, we got to get home. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're driving 12 hours. Been, been there, done that. Oh, yep. boy. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, it's been an interesting ride. <laughs> yeah, the first holler was a. <laughs> Wasn't what we have now. So I'm going to write a book when we get done with this. It was like a, an ex, what what do you call that? A sleeper camp. Yeah, a sleeper camp camera. Yeah. And with a box on the back, it was like a box truck. So, I mean, there were probably numerous occasions for a domestic, but we managed to, <laughs> the ramps had to be just right so that you didn't tip the tractor Load off so that it wouldn't scrape when process. it went in because, you know, and you had to pile blocks under it to get the ramps just at the right angle. And and, we're going to be married 40 years in September this year. There was nice, and I thought it wasn't going to see 35. Yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. That's for sure. But it was a, it was a, 
that, that we, you know, stop at a rest stop to get a couple hours of sleep so we could continue yeah. on. And, yeah. you know, you know how small that those trucks are in the sleeper part. He's facing one way, I'm facing the other, and the dog is down on the floor. By the time we woke up a few hours later, the dog's right in there. We're all mashed up in a pile. It's like, I can't uh, even move. we got to get home. Yeah. It was it was an experience. Yeah. What did we do, 30, 20-some that year? Oh, yeah. Every single region hook. Oof. Yeah, yeah that's that's a lot of hooks. Yeah. So live and learn. Yeah. We can say we did it. it was <laughs> Well, folks in the audience, if you're watching, you got questions, throw them up in the comments. We are watching those, and we're doing a better job of watching them now. Um, <laughs> but uh, Adam, Cody, I've monopolized most of this. I didn't intend to do that. I don't normally do that. Well, yes, I do. Um, you guys, your turn. Ask questions. Cody, anything? Not all at once. I was going to I was gonna ask, you talked about getting a shipping container lined up. What's that like? I mean, it, it's not easy to where you have – you know dimensions and all that figuring out what size container and, and organizing where you're, where you're gonna drop it off pick yeah. it up and all that stuff walk i mean because that's something most people unless they've done it before don't know the details about how intensive that is it you're right there's a lot of things uh that we're learning and we'll probably have tales to tell them um going with joe when we went we did learn a few things which was great um but we are working with a fellow that uh, from over there that's been very, very helpful. And he's actually trying to get us a 45 foot container. As Hans and I were talking about, he said we can only get a 40. And we're like, ooh, boy. That's tight. I mean, you got the special that Hans runs is 16 foot nine or 16 foot six. And you got my Ranger that's nine foot long. And then you got our mini is 12, five and a half to the end of the wheelie bars. And then we got Hans's big tires that we got to fit in there. And I'm going to throw another set of my little tires in there. But by the time we get everything in there, it's like we're really going to be scratching. So we can do a 40 foot and uh, William that's going to be trying to help us get a 45. So we get a 45 would be great. But uh, parking it at Hansi's farm, he's got a big farm. I guess the uh, tractor trailer will bring the container in and we can load it on Hansi's dock and just start strapping stuff down. Fuel's got to be out of everything. Um, my understanding, we can leave oil in as long as nothing's leaking. Terrible. Um, if it leaks tool, out the door, you're in big trouble. Nothing can leak out the door. But documentation is, it, 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 William said, the better documentation you all got, the faster it gets through customs. And so we're really doing our best to, uh, you know, get everything I's dotted, T's crossed, and have him the proper paperwork because. We don't want to hold it up because the other thing, we're giving up like nine poles over here we were going to go to, but then on the back side of this is our hometown pole in Langford, New York. And it's a big deal for us because that's the only time we're in New York anybody comes see us. So, right. so we're really hoping to get there in time. So we want to make sure everything is just perfect. Yeah. It is going to take a minute to load it. That's for sure. I do believe the bit about drilling holes, Ty. I'm sure you're right about that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's helpful information from Tyler. Yeah, Absolutely. and we got we got some uh, other folks that told us the same. We got some rubber blocks that were, you know, they're fussy on wood. You know, I know Canada is a big thing as far as dirt and wood coming back into the country, but we got some rubber blocking. We're going to be putting our stuff on, and whatnot. So it's uh, it, it's it's going to be a learning curve, but we're, we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get it. Yeah, but you're right, Michael. That does sound like the most Bruce thing ever yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. that is that is him to a t yeah. top 10 anyway yeah that we yeah. know of. yeah that we know of <laughs> does the rush ever change over the years when you pushed i mean i know you haven't been doing this for a long time but does it still curl your hair and and yeah. Yeah, yeah, always does. And you, you just sit there in the shoot and you, you know, you just start, you know, you're next up, you're all dressed, you're strapped in. Now you just got nothing but time to think while you're fully strapped in. And then your heart starts pounding 100 miles an hour. And yeah, it never changes. It, it's <laughs> always that way. And then you it finally get out there and you get to throw it, you know, throw it forward and launch. And it's, it's very exciting. Well, I'd imagine it's probably the same, you know, with Zach driving the driving the tractor and stuff like that. I mean, to the point where 
if you don't get that adrenaline rush anymore, time to quit. Time, time, time to hang it up. Yep. You know, yep. I mean, I for me, I still get it when I walk out on the track. I, Every me, time. Like, I, mean, I can't freaking wait for the freaking pull to get going, you know, that first first tractor down the track. I mean, I got goosebumps every freaking pull. She laughs at the crew laugh. I mean, every time it's for me, it's it's always it's intimidating or not intimidating, but excitement because we'll get in the pits and we'll get in the chute and you know, God hopes there's a freaking water closet in the area because you're all the time nervous. You gotta go to the gym. you know, it's just to let your coffee out or something but it's, it never changes i mean it, you never know because these freaking things are like a missile what way are they going to go you know yep kyle says he thinks the same thing happens when he pulls his three mile an hour farm all in farm stock but <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's because he thinks he's, it's going to break yeah right yeah well that was always exciting and fun too we, we had a john deere 60 and they'd put all the weights on it that they could possibly put on it. We were borrowing weights from three different yeah, farms, yeah. spent the whole next day taking weights back to everybody, but it was fun. Yeah, not quite the rush of that. How, how heavy did you weight up a 60? Oh my God. They got, they got nuts. Back in the day, of course there was a little beer involved back then. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. We had a local pull here in Strikersville and it was a, it was a hell of a farm. I mean, that's how I grew up. It was all farm up. stock. I, actually, when I was a kid, Hansi old uh, Hans Boxler Sr. and Joe Tilak were the ones that started turning the screws on the pumps on the old internationals. And yeah. that's probably one of the driving factors. I mean, I pulled garden tractors when I was a kid, but one of the driving factors of why we're doing what we're doing today. Yeah, I think so. And we sit down there until 2 30 in the morning, but we started pulling this old John Deere 60, would just pull a house down. And the 6,500 class, we had to just empty everything to get in. And we're up pulling a 12,500-pound class. Now hanging, we're talking. Hanging yeah, weights on a radiator cap. And then all up, yep. get another, we can get another ton. We can go 14.5. Okay, let's go. Yeah. You know, and then one night we waited it up and we found, oh, my God, it was just a, it was a shit show. Yeah. Um, and got it in 14.5. But, <laughs> yeah. No, Ty, we can't borrow a blower. We haven't been able to find it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to stick with our Janus. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I know they've uh, there. There are a few talking about the the two cylinder farm stock, eleven jillion pound class. They uh, there's uh, there's a few photos floating around from a uh, a certain pull in Pennsylvania um, that one of our super farm guys pulls has pulled in, and it was a picture of him, and I think he had a seventy, and and I think. King of the mountain. I think they they had to have that thing weighted up to twenty thousand pounds. Yes, yeah. <laughs> One of the most insane photos I have ever seen. It's, it's ridiculous to watch, and everybody would three quarters of the people would drive their tractors from the farm right to the thing, and oh, they'd yeah. be driving home at two three yeah. in the morning. They'd hook yep. up the manure spreader and head out. And leave know. the weights. They'd usually leave the right. weights, and strikers will come back and get them later. Yeah, it was crazy. <clears throat> yep. We never broke nothing back in them days. No, oh, it was, no but we did see some that come, broke in you know, half. You get home and your truck is dragging up around the ground from all the weights and back. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely crazy. It was fun, though. It was. Richard, Zach, you guys ever do anything like that? Run a crazy run a crazy 20,000-pound two-cylinder farm stock class? No, Joe, yeah. and I, Joe and I took our light pros and... Weighed 9,600 when we were in Illinois with the 4.1s. <laughs> That's about the craziest thing you've done with them. Yeah. I didn't have anywhere else but weight. Yeah, you'll have that. You'll have that. We definitely. You guys ever. Uh, you guys that ever was the night about Tucker to... about got arrested. <laughs> oh, that, that year. Yeah. 2004. 14 or 15. I forgot uh, what year it was. 15, it was I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those years. Yep. The one nice thing with the minis is we definitely like the sling and the weights on them. Yeah. Sure. I can even. Yeah, because you can carry them in your pockets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I just cut out a bunch of weights. They were for a. Uh, and they were only like. I don't know, seven inches wide by yeah. eight inches tall yeah. or something like that. And our first mini, we didn't we didn't know any better. 
and we had a couple of tractor weights <laughs> left from those days, the suitcase weights. Yeah. And we had somebody cut them for us so we could use them for weights on the tractor. And we were hanging them underneath the, you know, um, underneath the seat and we were hanging them on the sides in the back and just to make weight. And then, you know, several, probably a year or two later, somebody said, don't do that. Put all the weight on the front. That's the only place you need it. You're, you know, you're taking your light driver advantage yeah. and throwing it out the window. So yeah. these are better. These are eight pounds. Yeah. <laughs> nice. nice little guys. Love it. We learned a lot. I mean, just, just that stack in the weight cell. Because I used to have 50 pounds under my seat. We took that out too. Yeah. Well, guys, we've taken, what, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes of your oh, life that you're never going to get back. I well, really okay. appreciate it. We're not kicking you off at all. You're more than welcome to hang out. But um, we do want to thank you guys. Um, yeah, sure. These guys, you're welcome. These guys that are sitting here in a conference room table. Be, uh, yeah, they, they need to talk. Yeah, they, they do. And I thought that they would start, you know, smarting off and, and ad living. I mean, I know Zach reasonably well. I know he's quite capable. But... <laughs> You know, I'm I'm impressed with you, buddy. You you, you amaze me every time. We have been. You just can't hear us. Uh huh. It's I've watched to see whether or not you're hitting the mute button. You're not. <laughs> Don't start. Um. Uh. Where do we find you guys? Where is the spending their inheritance? Where are they spending time on social media? You guys doing anything with that? You can find us everywhere. We're on Facebook for spending their inheritance and. We're on Twitter, spending their inheritance. We're on TikTok, spending their inheritance. Uh, YouTube, we got a. We're trying to build our YouTube channel. So, man, if anybody can go over and subscribe, and watch some videos, uh, spending their inheritance on YouTube. Uh, we got, I think I got about a hundred videos up there now. Um, and like I said earlier, we can, we can go to uh, Angry Duck Graphics and look at our merch, uh, buy our merch, and look at everybody else's there too. And yep. You bet. These guys just got some cool trucker hats and beanies up there. Yeah, yeah. He's had some stuff, and I don't know. I, did I mention earlier, Kurt out to Angry Ducks working on some really nice. He just sent me a draft tonight. I don't want to show it yet, but uh, it's a very nice event shirt for over there. Um, so it's going to be cool with the Mata poll. We're buying every, all our crew and everybody going over one, but we're going to have them available on the website and for our people going over. Some available over there for everybody. So. Yeah, yeah, the flip over videos. That's ten. Like, yeah, that's a cool yeah, ten. Ten. <laughs> the nine was from the East German judge, and he's a dick. Yeah, there you go. Well, they usually are. <laughs> but I, so, you know, somebody's I somebody's gonna make a feigning goat. Yes, feigning goat. Somebody's yeah. gonna make a feigning goat like uh, you know sticker and just randomly walk by and slap it on the side. For yeah, that. It'd be yeah. Fine. Mm -hmm. yep. Probably have stickers. Yeah. Stickers would even be good too. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Lindsay and I'll get on that next time we see yeah, you. Yeah, just, go. just little, just little goats, and that way, if God forbid, if there are multiples, it'll be like stripes on a general's arm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we hope <laughs> not. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. That's that's the element of surprise with motorsports. You never know. Just, just right. like, just like, no words. Just the goat with four legs in the air, upside down. That's exactly right. on the side. You know, and you know, exactly right. People, yeah, yeah. people will ask questions of why. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sure. Well, if you want to, you can start. You can brand that. You can turn that into the Fainting Goat Society, and right. all Great. there's Great. all sorts of all sorts of things that, that you could have fun with. Well, you know, like after the polls is when all this gets brainstormed. So again, what could possibly go wrong? You know? Yeah. Well, you yeah. remembered it. Yeah. The next the yeah. next day. So that I mean, that's good because yeah. there's lots of great ideas that never ever get remembered. That's well, true. did you hear? They never got to sleep, so that's why they remembered it. They're still awake. Could that's be. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is the bear going over to? Well, you we don't know. The bear's kind of had a little bit of issue, so I don't. Yeah. I, he's I, kind I, of falling he's apart. Kind of run off, and I, I don't know. He's had <laughs> some issues, so we ain't quite sure about that. Okay. The plane tickets are about a thousand bucks, so I don't know if he yeah. really needs to go that bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> Put them in the shipping crate. I was going to say, yeah. there's probably oh, yeah. room in the shipping crate. But we are, what I should tell you though, is uh, we're going to try to keep up with between Adam going and taking pictures and everything. We're going to try to, for our fans and supporters, we're going to try to create a, a start to finish type of scenario on YouTube and Facebook. And, awesome. And so uh, try to take us. everybody along who wants to. We've had a, geez, 
I can't tell you how many people have reached out to us since we made the announcement we were going, but we're going to try to create something like that. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's awesome. Let us know when that's uh, let us know when that when that becomes a thing yeah. so yeah. we can, you know, show yeah, that Adam, show off that story. Yeah, Adam's going to have huge involvement. Yeah, in that, yeah, sure. we're looking forward to it. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you guys getting us on tonight. Yeah, Thank you for coming. well, feel free to hang around, have another drink, yeah. and, you know, charge up some more Milwaukee like, tools back like there behind you. And yeah, you know. all right. Thank you. If you need anybody so, wants to ask a question, fire away. We're here. That's right. That's right. Zach, it's your moment of glory. <laughs> Richard, and Richard. Start. Hey, look at that. The beard is coming back. It is coming back. I, it looks I, nice. It looks nice. I I feel privileged to be in the in the group of people that got to shave from up in January. So <laughs> I feel privileged to have been able to do it because I know how much money we we raised and yes, you know. And how theoretically that helped somebody. Well, if it and didn't help with, of, with treatment, it helped with research or really keeping the lights on and paying for snacks in the break room. I don't care. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, uh, Charles and I have talked about this a little bit. Uh, this summer at our events, at our entry tent, we're going to have a donation box for people to come and make donations that we will put up, put up to. Uh, possibly see this go away again or we we'll, might have another representative for IPL but to uh add to that and then our buddy yeah, did you just look at Joe that. about that no way yeah. for real <laughs> did the next volunteer did you just look at Joe when he said that I did not I, I did not know. but I did I think Zach might have <laughs> uh our buddy Dan Hyatt brought up a thing that maybe some of these other pulling organizations ought to try and do this and then whoever comes up with the least amount of money gets penalized for something in january also <laughs> have a little bit of a call out here to you know badger state and some of these other organizations that are involved well make it official who's it going to be who are you uh who are you throwing down on first who do you uh, guys run who do you get well i guess in in january Five tens yeah. run with four sixty sixes, right? Yeah. So your options are pretty wide open. We have that. We have uh, we got some light throw guys that are that are making that are going to be there too. And from what I hear, there's going to maybe be a call out from from the gentleman in Effingham to the four one guy, local four one guys to show up and see if they can make some noise there too so can confirm that that is a rumor at least <laughs> i like that i like yeah. rumors like that so yeah i mean we, you know, we we we've been discussing some of these things we don't have all the details worked out on that but yes we are going to be trying to raise some extra money to uh put in indiana pulling league's name to get whoever we get in the barbershop for next January, which it sounds like it is going to continue to stay in Shipshawana. Uh, <coughs> so we'll see who we can get in the, in the barbershop up there this next time too. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. I like that idea. And it's good that we're staying in ship. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. that yes. Made me happy. So good for us. It's close for us. Yeah, don't rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what's going on for you guys? What are you guys? What are you guys kicking around? You guys have, have mentioned a few things, maybe somewhat cryptically. Um, you got anything well, you want to share with the group? We ha we have some we have some new things we. First off, I want to. We're we're coming from the showroom of Brad Hal Ford, who has re up again for a second year, being the presenting sponsor of Indiana Pulling League. Nice. Uh, and we want to thank Brad for that. Uh, we have also just recently, since Louisville, uh, brought on Liquitube as a new sponsor for Indiana Pulling League, and that involves a couple of the things that we're going to want to do announce tonight. Awesome. Uh, 
first one is, is there going to be a sponsor of what we deemed last year as the Indiana, Indiana Truck Pullers 3.0 Challenge, uh, where we picked five events uh, that we had 3.0 trucks and Indiana Truck Pullers and ourselves kind of co-sanctioned those classes. And at the end of the year, we paid, at the end of those five pulls, we kept points and the points winner ended up with an extra thousand dollars. Second place was 600, third place was 400. So LiquidTube is gonna be involved with that. Um, June 1st, we will be start that at Boswell, Indiana. Uh, July 12th and 13th at Greentown and Tipton, Indiana. And then August 3rd at Colfax, Indiana. And the last one will be at August the 10th at Idaville, Indiana. Uh, so we will be doing that. And then we have a new poll that one of our, that our head tech guy is gonna start at Rochester, Indiana at the end of the year, September the 7th. We are gonna be doing 10 classes of pulling starting at one o'clock in the afternoon. And then we're gonna have, thanks to Tim Overmeyer, the liquid tube pull off. Well, we're gonna invite the top three in points back from each class to run for some extra money just because we're not we're not we're not we're done, not done with yet with the time all right because 19 hooks is not enough <laughs> no it'll be the last one <laughs> so we've got we've got those two deals we've got those two deals going there with liquid tube and and adding adding more pulling to pulling and then I'm going to turn over our third big deal to Zach, who put together another deal, which you're kind of advertising across the bottom of the screen here. Hey, Blake, before he starts talking, why don't you hop next to him? You're off camera right now, and I know you're here, and I know you're recording. He, 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 he wants he to get more the camera. Like, he's getting more like Brad every day. He didn't want to be on camera. Oh, for the love. Is Brad here too? Is Brad? No, Brad he's, Brad? Home. Oh. He's, he's home. I think he's watching probably, but so. hi dad. So I wanted to do this for the last three or four years and we could never make the logistics of it work right um, with, you know, the national events and, and stuff like that. So we're going to introduce the, the ZZ Diesel Century, Central Indiana Light Limited Pro Showdown. So what we're going to do is um, ZZ Diesel, which is a local diesel shop here close to home. Jake. Zodi owns it, good friend of mine. Um, he's come up with the money to add $5,000 above the IPL purse for the top three event, top three finishers across three events. Those three events are Friday night, July 12th at Greentown, Indiana, which is our hometown show. July 13th, Saturday night at Tipton, Indiana, which is 12 miles south of here and Sunday the 14th in Frankfurt, Indiana, which is 30 minutes southwest of here. All, if, if you take from where we're sitting now, all events are within, you can be to within 30, 35 minutes. Um, so that $5,000 is on top of the IPL $4,000 purse every night that pays 12 places. So there's gonna be $18,000 um, up for grabs over three nights for light limited pros. Um, and the way we do it in IPL is the light pros and the four ones run 9,000 pounds heads up. We are going to let the, the super farms weigh 9,500 at NTPA rules, so no coolers. And, we're gonna look, we're gonna, and we've had some interest from some guys out east. We're going to let the interstate rule mod turbo guys come run at 9,300 pounds, um, following NTPA safety rules and light pro higher rules i'm gonna say um so that's kind of what we're going to do there's a couple other people throwing some money in this thing um my new business evolution outdoors which is an outdoor power store in marion indiana we're putting a little bit into it and then uh, i get a probably our i guess i'm going to say our non-family crew chief for the, the pulling team is a nutrient uh sales rep he's going to put a, a little in it too so hoping to pull I told the guys then earlier, if I could get 15 tractors to run all three events, I'd be tickled. Um, we only have one conflict that weekend as of now, um, and it's an NTPA region show down in Southern Ohio. 
Um, but other than that, the, the national schedule seems to be pretty wide open that weekend. So anybody listening that's got a 4-1, a Light Pro, a Super Farm, or Mod Turbo, we'd love to have you. All three events are, are good dirt, good tracks, good fairgrounds. Um, and like I said, you can beat all of them from, from Greentown within 35 minutes. So that's kind of the gist of it. I think I think that's going to be a sweet deal. That's going to be one heck of a weekend for for those guys. Yeah, we uh, we hope so. We we it's something we're looking forward to. And like I said, I wanted to been doing it, wanted to do it for three or four or five years. We just have Bell make it work. And when all three of these events lined up three days in a row, it's like now's the time to do it. So, yeah. And furthermore, finding finding a weekend where pretty much all the light pros are more or less free and. Mm-hmm theoretically four ones as well right so, and so if now anybody's got, go ahead go Ryan. Ahead. no i was gonna go ahead if anybody's got any questions they can get a hold of me or richard either one or joe moore the three of us we can we can answer any questions about it whatsoever all three fairgrounds have okay staying overnight um our fairgrounds tipton of course frankfurt's on a sunday so most people are going to want to go home but Greentown and Tipton both okay to anybody staying overnight. Both are very roomy fairgrounds. Um, our fair is the third largest, third largest county fair in the state of Indiana. Very clean, very uh, very well ran fair. It's put on the local Lions Club here, um, so they're they they are more than happy to have everybody come. So. Nice, that's awesome. You gotta love it when they uh, when they step up and they get on board and really support you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they have. They're doing uh, they're repairing. We we've got a night really nice metal grandstands there, and the the bottom ten rows have been wood uh, that were left from you know probably the seventies. They've replaced all the wood on those. I finally got them to not have demolition derbies or motocross or anything like that the nights leading up to the pole so um we can we can keep the dirt in in i guess good condition not have to worry about digging or, or moving dirt but, or, or, or car parts or whatever it may be you find out there um so nice so you looking for you said you're looking for like fifth a class of 15 but We'll take however many um, we are, but I like said if I if I could have 15 every night, I'd be I'd be tickled. Which we were running eight to ten last year. Yes. The IPL as a group everywhere we went, pretty much. I think Greentown we had 15, 13 or 15 last year. Um, Tipton we had 10 or 11, you know. But uh, we we've been running a pretty pretty good eight to ten everywhere we go. Um, yep. We, we, and we got a good group too that, that runs with us. Our the other thing, our entry fee for a non-member forty dollars. Forty dollars is all it's going to cost you to come play if you're not an IPL member. Nice. And if I remember right, that Tipton track can be something of a of, of a mean mean bitch. Pardon they, me, French. It, it it very well can. All three of these tracks here have got phenomenal dirt um on them and they've got good track crews they've got good groups that that work to help them it, it's you couldn't you couldn't get a better three to come to if you're looking for good dirt and yep good show with good crowds too that's the other thing yeah. you know our crowd we went a lot of years greentown not having a pole we're finally getting our pull up and going and the crowd coming back tipton always has a phenomenal crowd and frankfurt i i didn't get a go last year but i think they had a really good really yeah, good, good crowd, crowd. so mm-hmm. Yeah, I seem to remember video of um, of uh, the track in Tipton bringing mm-hmm. a, a light pro to its knees. Yep, or multiple knees. Yep. It's I think also, you even brought home a souvenir that night, didn't you? It's yeah. It's also the it's also the site of probably one of the more infamous IPL nights in 2020. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I remember we, that. We pulled the two. 2.33 o'clock in the morning, yeah. And we didn't we didn't screw around except for the the engine coming apart 
and laying on the ground in front of me. But other than that, we didn't screw around. We just had that much iron that, that year. Because we did yep. stuff in 2020 that nobody else did. Yes. You, yeah, that is for sure. Yeah, we, we pulled the first three classes when we ran 62 tractors down the track. <laughs> and had four more to go. And then, That's awesome. And then they exploded and happened. Right. Right. Yeah, that's wild. That was that was the first night that uh, I ever got to really watch and pay attention to an IPL show, and that was um, the first of, of a handful that I've gotten to watch because you guys um, you guys did things like you said that you did things that nobody else did during during COVID, and uh, one of them was really lean into social media, and that's why that's why I saw that you know and. The same with Adam, because I remember Adam and I were, were swapping text messages while we were watching that show. And uh, it was awesome. And, and we were all very, very proud of you guys and how you guys rolled with the punches. I mean, there were, there were a lot of organizations that they weren't able to do that, you know, and you guys soldiered through and, you know. Uh, we've, you had Jeff, we've had Jeff Shanks along kind of for the whole ride here with us on stuff like that video. And then uh, that night, Chuck Russell was there. Um, of course, my wife was live on Facebook that night and did a lot at that point in time. Unfortunately, work has kind of got in the way to where she's not been able to do it quite near as much here in the last couple of years. But uh, we still get some, she still gets on the Facebook live and does that. And that's been an amazing thing. Uh, we've got a couple people from overseas that they get up in the early morning to get on her live feed to watch IPL pull. So, you know, uh, that's cool. It, it's crazy. The other thing I think we can say, speaking for all of us, is that, that year we did that. We had to thank our promoters too for 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 letting us do that and standing behind us that year when nobody else was doing it. You know, that yes. was that was the biggest because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have done it. Right. You right. know, right. And it, it wasn't it wasn't easy. I, I can tell you that from from a promoter standpoint. You know, the hoops we had to jump through and, and stuff yeah. like that. It, it wasn't easy, but it the, they stuck with us and we got it we got it done. Yeah. yeah. And as we was re reminded a couple of weeks ago at tech school, people will call you guys on a Monday and you'll have a call on a Friday. And I tried to tell Uncle Larry that that's not always that wasn't really true, and he barked at us that yes, you guys, I seen you guys do it. So <laughs> can't win them all. We'd have 50 a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Richard, if Richard had his way up, we'd run our live pros 50 times a year. That tracks. That tracks. I get that. So, there's two light pro guys at the table. You guys ready to rock and roll already or no? Sort of. Give us a couple hours, we could be, you know, we, we come home from Chipshawana and rolled at Blake's barn, blowed the tires up, dumped the water out of it, and that's where it sets. So, fair enough. <laughs> a couple hours, it can, it can, they, they asked me if I was coming out to Pennsylvania a couple weeks ago, and I said, well, no. I said, and somebody said, well, would it run? I said, yeah, a couple hours would run, but, but no, it's staying home. So it's odd for us to be ready to go and not be putting a motor together right now or, or what are we, June what? We're going to ship Shawana. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, a couple hours worth of work, we're, we're, we're ready to go. So Nice. Yeah, I need more than two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Give him two and a half. He'll be ready. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Just needs a little more ether to get started. So, yeah. so Ryan, you're going to bless us with your presence. It sounds like I'm planning on it. Good deal. Good deal. I'm planning on it. I've promised you guys for three freaking years now that I'm going to come out and shoot you guys in the summertime, and and shoot an entire IPL show instead of. Five Ten Hot Farms down at Jeremy's every fall, and when that's the only class I really get to see. So we have yeah, I think we're planning on it. 
Joe, it'll be the first time I've seen you make a hook outdoors since I was literally a child. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. not kidding. I, yeah. I mean, I, I grew up, what you know that, I grew up watching you guys pull. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it, they, they were not 540 light pros at the time. Yeah, that was back in the Michigan Farm Stock days. Yep. yep. The rope and the yeah. no rope class. The no, yep, the rope. I still have the rope machine. Do you really? Yep. It's in my barn. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. We should do it, uh, Richard. Just consider this a throwback. <laughs> just, just, just a throwback. Zach, you're not invited because you can't run your leg through that slow. You can be the guy who walks with the flag or with <laughs> with, with the rope. I'm not allowed to flag no, anymore. Say, no, 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 we're he's not allowed to flag anymore. Parts come at me when I flag. Ask Logan Thomas. That yeah. Or or dirt clods get underneath of him, and then and then we have to repair our flags. Oops. That's another one of the awards we were talking about at the end of, at the start of the show. The Dirt Clot Award? No, the flags. So at Goshen three years ago now? Yes. We were we had our hot farms up there and and Logan was in the sled and we had uh, he had a radio he had one of our radios he, too and it was it was not PG most so, of the time. He, uh, no, I've heard your radios before on a live stream, and no, they are not PG sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we got we got to work on that too. Yeah, um, a little bit maybe. He uh, he did had blowing everybody up to eighty two ninety, and Kevin Smith comes down there last hook and just got a hold of it, and uh, I started backpedaling, and the guy in the skid loader, Eric Goshen, could decide to put his pile of dirt that he lays at the end of the track at about three fifteen. Oop. And I, I feel like I know where this is going. I went, and Kevin went about 360. I went past those railroads, excuse my language. Uh -huh. Flags come up. They end up under Logan's pan. And Kevin actually, <laughs> pedaled, the, Kevin actually pedaled the throttle, thought he was going to run over me. And then when he realized he cleared me, he got back in the throttle. Atta boy, as you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was a, a an event itself and anyways so they they give me a flag that year at the banquet one of the broken flag sticks nice that year kevin tried to kill zach or whatever it was so i hope that's sitting on behind the bar so it is actually right next to our toy polar in my case with all my polars <laughs> nice nice you resisted the urge to tell him where to put it i'm proud of you well, yeah. there was some. I'm not gonna mention names. There's somebody else there from another polling association that took that duty that day. I didn't have to touch them; it was taken care of for me. <laughs> I imagine that I know who that was. Uh, yeah. Asked why. Yeah, you were probably on a phone call with said individual. Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. I know nothing. Okay, just wondered. You know, but yeah. Nice. Well, it sounds like the, the season's shaping up nice again. Um, you guys are adding how many new pulls? I know I heard, did I hear one? Uh, we've added, we're at 28 pulls for the summer. Um, we actually start the season off on May 31st with a new pull at Napanee, Indiana. Okay. Uh, and then we, right before we start the the guy, the guy that schedules this stuff shouldn't schedule five in a row, especially with the first one starting in Georgetown, Illinois, as a new poll. But then we go to Greentown two days, Tipton and Frankfurt all in a row for five straight days of polling. And Wabash on Wednesday. And Wabash on Wednesday then, yes. Wow. Um, before we get a small break and then finish, finish things up, at the end of the month at Florey, Indiana, which they're running – all nine classes doing a similar thing going to have four session four classes in the afternoon and then finish up with five classes in the evening uh, and then we're going back to the Amishville campground again that'll be a benefit pool for Kendall and April House daughter Allie Allie ah good uh, and this is the official order we are going to run stuff in over there 
We are going to start with our 15 mile an hour king of the hill, go to single engine mods, go to our light limited pro stocks. Then we are going to go back to 10 mile an hour farm stock, hot farm, and then we are going to finish the night with five inch pro stocks. Nice. It'll be our only time with five inch pro stocks for the year, but we, uh, we are going to run them over there. So that'll be a full night of pulling. And then we're going to end the, end the season with the hometown diesel IPL finals. And we will have 10 classes, five in the afternoon, five in the evening. And then when we're done with that, then we're going to start to pull off. Uh, top three po points guys going back out, giving the crowd some more pulling and having more money. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Kevin's, Kevin's got, yeah, he's got the other half. Nice. So, yeah, it's going to be a very busy summer. Of course, in the state of Indiana, we, we're go, we go to three places that in the state of Indiana, if you mention them, in the pulling world, most everybody knows where they're at, and we go to a lot of consecutive weekends to kind of start the year. And that's Boswell, Indiana, which they call themselves the hub of the universe. Uh, the following weekend, we go to Idaville, Indiana, which if you've never been there, it's a town of 300 that on that night will be about 4,000. Love and then, shows like that. Those are so much fun. Out, out right behind the old firehouse. Uh, and that's, and actually built, they just built a new firehouse on the corner. And they've been doing polls for this year will be 70 years. Wow. And then the weekend after that, we do the double Friday, Saturday night poll down at Tampico. Uh, we got it. We got in down there last year and they were very happy. We had a few small hiccups here and there with some things, but nothing that we couldn't work out. Um, one of the hiccups they had was they had to expand their pit area because on Saturday night we had 35 pop marks there. Nice work. Good work. I think you guys have got the third and fourth oldest polls in the country. Uh, between, yes. Between Idaville and Tipton, or excuse me, Tampico, excuse me. And I would think if somebody do the math, Tipton's probably been going pretty, pretty long too. Yes. They've pulled Tipton, Indiana a lot of years. And, and I mean a lot. And, you know, any of these polls, if you do the history on them, like my dad pulled dead weight in Greentown back in the 60s. You know, so any of these polls have been going a long, long time, but those three are the ones everybody seems to know the most about. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's cool to see. It's cool to see some of these shows where the community really gets behind it, and and that's how you're able to make it go for umpteen years. You know, or, or you know, four decades, five decades, whatever. It works out to be. We've got a few shows like that out this direction. Um, well, one that I can think of off the top of my head, uh, Bill Petrie's poll down in uh, uh, Kansas. Um, that's been going for a thousand years since wheels were square. Um, and, it, you know, it's one of those same type deals where you got a, a town of a population of like, six seven hundred and and for that one weekend a year or that one night no two nights no one this year one this um, year. it'll it'll swell to seven to eight thousand and that's pretty fun that's that's a lot of fun to watch that crowd pull in because they're lively and loud and they love their pulling they come from everywhere it's not it's not it does draw some crowd from uh, the KC suburbs, you know, it's not terrible far away. Um, and it always, it always seems to turn out nice, you know, and this year I finally get to go back, um, first time in, gosh, it's gotta be three years, four years, I think. I think the last time I was there was, uh, 21 maybe. It's one of those small towns. Know. It's one of the small towns where they have to bring in a, a cell phone booster because it's not really built for the network. Yeah. In, with everyone there. 
yeah, they will legit crash the the cell towers and the whole works. And <laughs> that's the way our county fair is, you know. And I'm not saying they come to go to the poll, but everybody here's been to our county fair, and it's if you want to rob Howard County, other than in the fairgrounds, that's the time of time of year to do it. Um, it's I don't know how many people they put through there a night, but it is it's astronomical. If it's a nice week, nice. Nice. And that does good for the community too. And that's, I mean, that's part of the reason that we do this. It's not just for, you know, the love of the sport. It's, I mean, this makes a difference in communities. You know? Well, like I said, it, at Idaville, that's helped that the tractor poles have helped them build a, a new firehouse. And it is, it is a very, very nice firehouse. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, they done, they done a really good job with doing that. There's bleachers down both sides of the track now to accommodate the 3,000 plus people that are there. Um, and then for some reason, it seems like some of the best nights were nights when it was like 95 degrees with about 90% humidity. <laughs> and everybody in the world decided they was coming there to sweat with the rest of us and we pulled to the wee hours in the morning. Then the power goes out. Yeah, and then the power went out one night when the Straight. Right. Get a light pole. I think what forty minutes later, we were back pulling mm -hmm. with generators and spotlights off from the, the fire trucks. Off the fire trucks, we finished. We finished the single engine mod class in it by candlelight. Literally, mm -hmm. that is fantastic. One of those kind of nights where uh, air density altitude gets replaced with air density attitude. Yes. yes. And they serve beer there, so you can just imagine. Yeah. That sounds like a good time. It I'll is. bring a generator next time. It's, it's a cool we can place. do it again. It's a cool place. So what all classes do you have? I actually, I was on the phone with a guy tonight, um, and he's a gas truck guy. Do you guys run any gas truck classes? We do not have any gas truck class of our own. Okay. Uh, we do have pro stock four wheel drive trucks on our schedule that we bring in Indiana truck pullers to do that. Okay. Uh, the only Off truck class we have other than that are the two six and three of diesel trucks. Off top of your head, do you know what the cube limit is for? Um... Uh, that class, and I know Brittany's on, so if you uh, don't, she 485, I believe. Okay, so it is okay, so it is a small cube class. It's a small cube, big blocks, yes. Okay. And a few, uh, Greg Salmon out of Illinois is running a SB2. Okay, I have a buddy who's um building a 598 and he's trying to find a place where he can run it. So, sounds like he's going to have to go play against Brammer and the and the, the new corn fed. Isn't he? Isn't he maxed out on cubes? Wouldn't he be more like six fifty and more? Or? Yeah, yeah, six fifty. Well, unless you go on the PPL side and then you can have the the big motors. Right. Man, well, I don't think he wants to do that. He's actually this truck is actually going to be a dual duty truck. He's going to do. Um, uh, he's going to do a little bit of drag running, uh, drag strip with it, or actually dirt drags and, and sand drags. Um, so he wants, you know, and, and part of the rule set there is it's got to have a an OEM drive line. He can't do an o, uh, he can't do an open drive line. No. Okay. So he's so he's going to be um, he's going to be a pretty niche. It'll be a niche kind of thing, but. Um, We'll find him. We'll find him somewhere. We'll find him yeah. somewhere to hook. One summer of that, he'll say enough of that crap. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know him. Um, and Joe, actually, you probably do too. Um, but uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's he's moved from, I don't know, I think small block forward to big block forward to great big block forward. And, and now he wants to go super big block forward. So why don't you just, why don't you just go, you know, just, Go balls out. Call Sonny's. He's like, I don't have, I don't have, a, no. I have to maintain a life, and, and this truck needs to do two things, not one. 
Wait, nope, that won't work then. Well, there is a group, and they actually started pulling with Wolverine in their class that's kind of in that southern Michigan area that uh, the old pepper shaker truck is part of that, and they run something similar to that on DOT tires, and then they mix in with the mod truck guys and Wolverine. Yeah, team. that yeah. sounds like a and, – and he was talking about that. That sounds yeah. like that might be the place. Yeah, there's a few. Wolverine has managed to kind of juggle their rules a little bit to, to get the NTPA – trucks to play with those guys a little bit and yes yeah it, does, it seems to be working they haven't they haven't completely run off the dot guys yet yeah uh, that's check your truck and that red and black one of shindle deckers both run really good and are beautiful trucks yeah and and chrysler's ford as well those those yes. three are, are the are the ones yes yeah, so those three trucks went up at up at Shipshawana on our friday night we had kind of an open truck class and uh the one night and all three of those trucks were there and put on really really good shows and it was it was a lot of fun nice uh, back to our classes we have our some of our other classes we have an alder farm class which is for a lack of a better term is hot farm on 18 fours and a 3500 rpm lemon okay um, we have a single engine mod class, which we have the man back here who's won the points title for 10 years in a row now, Tony? Just seven. Just seven, okay. <laughs> Just seven. Who's counting? Uh, then we have two mile per hour classes. We have farm stock, which is 10 mile an hour. And the rules in it are some safety equipment. 12,000 pounds, 10 mile an hour, 3,000 RPM. No engine rules, no turbo rules, no tire rules, other than they can only be top cut. Okay. Then we have the King of the Hill, which we have in January, 15 mile an hour. We have Hot Farm, which the 510 Hot Farm originated with one of our previous versions of Indiana Pulling League. It started out basically as Indiana Hot Farm Organization and then changed to Indiana Super Farm and then changed to Indiana Pulling League. And the single engine mod class was by itself for a while. And that's where we were going to the same polls as those as Indiana Pulling League at the time. And we finally decided why should we pay $300 an event for insurance and they pay $300 an event for insurance when we could pay $300 once as one organization? And Hard to argue yes, that. That's how I became part of Indiana Pulling League. The first year I was the secretary treasurer. Kevin Smith was president. Ryan Funk was vice president. And after the first year, they decided that they had done it multiple times for multiple years and wanted some new blood. And that was when I took over as president. Doug Lunau from the One Bad Binder team took over as yep. vice president. And my wife, Tiffany, took over as secretary treasurer. And at that time, we had three classes. When I took over, we discussed it. And that was when we added Light Number Pro Stock. And I think several people thought we were nuts for combining the Light Pros and Lender Pros together. And Almost ten years later, now it seems to work okay. Yeah, it works pretty okay, just fine. Uh, so then we have Light Leather Pro, and then this year we're bringing back a combo class of Light Supers mixed with some mods and some limited Light Supers at some various different weights and stuff, uh, trying to resurrect that a little bit as a as an extra class. And two six and three o and diesel six pickup, and three o diesel pickup trucks. Yep. Those rules are straight across the board, pretty much. Nice. So it's going to be a full show. I think the smallest show we do is three classes for a, for an event. Most of them are four, four to five. Uh, like 
like I said, Flores doing all nine and Rochester doing all nine. Plus, we're going to have the first stock trucks up there also. And the pull off. And the pull off. So that's 27 extra hooks then? Uh, 30. Oh. It's the th we're going to have the Pro Force participate also. Oh, got it. Okay. Nice. Well, you're really going to have to, you're really going to have to move them through there. You're going to be, or we're going to be real late. I'm going to have to bring extra batteries for that show. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> Probably some like beef jerky and snacks, you know, stop for food yeah. and water along the way. Yeah. Oh, we're going to, we're going to have food vendors. We're going to have a beer tent. It, it's going to be a, it's going to be a deal. One of them shows where Joe and I want to leave the tractor at home, and just come watch and, and partake, partake in shenanigans. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, that happens once in a while. When you're a camera guy, leaving the camera at home is kind of weird. You're like Ricky Bobby. You don't know what to do with your you hands. You don't know so. what to do with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yet, if you do get into the sauce and you get too deep into the sauce, the camera becomes somewhat useless because ain't nothing going to be in focus. <laughs> you speaking from experience there, Ruse? Allegedly. What are you drinking tonight, buddy? He, he, he produced some abstract art that he didn't know he was capable of doing. <laughs> <laughs> really? We're going to go down that road? <laughs> Actually, um, it was Rebel 100. Now it's now it looks like it needs a refill, so um, pardon me while I go and refill. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. <laughs> Charles, are you coming Zach, down? Good looking out. What? I said thanks for looking out. <laughs> Charles, are you coming down that weekend? Yes, I'll be there. Awesome. Well, back to the 2020 year, what got us involved with everything in January was the fact that the state of Illinois wouldn't allow Clint to have a full authority bill. And he knew that we had pulled that Shichuana outside in the parking lot earlier. And he called me and said, Hey, what do you think? Would they entertain us putting that pull on up there? And so, I got a hold of my contacts and well, the rest is kind of history now as to Indiana Pulling League getting involved with the Midwest Winter Nationals and helping helping Clint and forging that relationship with him to make that all work out up there. Yeah, you guys have definitely been instrumental in making that go. And because of that, that instrumental in, in selling a whole lot of pretzels and giving off more diabetes and all of the things, you know, <laughs> so good for you guys. Well, and, that, and also that was the second event or second time where Zach and I are no longer allowed to be on the track at the same time now, because at tip between Tipton and a block flying over the sand pile where we're, we was told by Mr. Mears that we're not allowed on any more pulling tracks together. So Mears just assigned blame to you two for that? Yes, he did. Oh, that's great. <laughs> both, both, both instances, I was on the finish line, Richard was on the starting line. Both times that happened. Nice. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Uh, I, I remember seeing that video and, and just for some reason, I just see this. this. I don't know if the camera, if Jeff was behind you. And you just see this silhouette of this man with flags who's just kind of, this just happened in front of me. And you see him just kind of take a second to compose himself. And then he looks down and between his legs, there's like a connecting rod or a piston or a chunk of a block or something. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, well, we had a piston go just between my legs, basically, and rolled out a little ways and then... You know, of course, everybody, you just kind of make sure everybody's still standing around you. And then, because 90% of the time when something like that happens, the guy in the driver's seat's 
is okay. I mean, yep. the safety equipment worked the way it should that night, and the safety equipment worked the way it should in Chipewyan. You know. Yep. Um, and as a flag guy, I guess I've always thought maybe I'm wrong. So by telling me I'm wrong, but you check your surroundings before you, because like I said, 95% of the time, the guy in the seat's okay. You know, in an instance like that, um, you know, you're talking roll over something, you're, you're probably different, but an instance where it blows a block out, you see it go forward. Most of the time, the guy in the seat's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cause that was also the year of Mike Evans rolling over. It's no joke. And, happening right by me as the starting line flagman and i'm the first one there and i remember that all too well and i'm sure you do too yes and and don't care to ever have that happen again i wasn't oh, on I, no way. I wasn't on the track that time all right you get a pass for that one but yeah that was that was a scary deal yes i like how charles and i there ships one always seem to be the only ones to stay on the other side of the barrier now <laughs> well, I mean, if you got a pair, you might as well use them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second year in a row I've looked around and went, well, I guess you and I are the only ones here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Woody talked me into thinking that I needed to be a finish line flagman this year down there. And yeah, I don't know which is worse, watching him launch and go past you screaming or them coming at you at 30 mile an hour screaming. So. It's fun. I kind of think I'd probably opt for the for the starting flagman spot if it was me. I'd like to finish in better, um, you know. But it is both of them got their own their own neat things about them. But I, I like to finish in better. Well, starting line, you don't have to run as far. Just saying. Yeah, well, well, it depends on which yeah. it depends on which end of the track it happens. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm just that. saying, like, I mean, you you can you could either try to run backwards or try to run forwards in the starting line, and that's it, that sounds like a lot of work. Or you just jump out of the way on the bar at the barrier too. So. Yes, that's right. We can sidestep. Hey, yeah. One night about indoors when you're the finish line flagging, you can't backpedal very far. Nope. <laughs> Just nope, stand, nope. At the, stand at the corner of the pile, and sooner or later, they're going to stop. <laughs> yep. Whether they watch your flags or not, they're going to stop. Yep. Right. But, they watch, I mean, they watch fortunately flags, for you, what? there's only so much There's only so much room there for Kevin Smith to, you know, just, you know, dump some dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get Kevin up there first in January, you know. That's true. I just figured I'd see if he was still paying attention because I saw his, his comment about uh, it appears that we're also doing a pull-off at Tampico. We did do a pull-off at Tampico last year when we had 35 of them there. Oh, boy. We put nine of them in the pull-off. Nicely but. done. <laughs> so is it the was it the typical Tampico show where everybody, it's like free to get in, but you have to buy like two fish, fish sandwiches or something? Yep. Yes, I believe they said they sold more fish sandwiches than they did the year before. Nice. Nice. I've always been told that that's a show that, that you got to go to at least once. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. It's, it's a good place to go. It, it, it's something you can't explain. It's something you have to experience. It's like an Idaho South. Because it's a real short track, isn't it? Uh, clock in uh, like two ninety five or three hundred or maybe three ten or something. Well, what did you what did you go when you went to sand pile, Joe? Three eighteen, three nineteen, and he was in the sand pile. There you go. So there's there's and and there's now we can call this a travel show. Darren has given us food recommendations for out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Darren. We appreciate the travel agent in you. Uh, you can ride that off in your taxes now. There we go. That's that's you know. <coughs> we're here we're here for you, Darren. So No, it's it's I'm oh, yeah. looking forward to it. I'm I'm really looking forward to getting out there, you know, during 
the summer seeing these seeing you guys without the smoke pipes on I mean so many people and, and I was thinking about this not too long ago but thinking about how many people that I only get to shoot indoors I don't yeah. get to see them outdoors really and uh, it'll be nice to be able to change that you know and see a bunch of you guys outdoors you ain't kidding about a short track at Tampa going from the road to the sand piles 300 or the dirt piles 380 feet and they don't start at the road no no you got what 37 foot sled or whatever it is 35 foot of sled well we have rod we normally have roger sled down there his sure. is like 32 or something like that it's three foot shorter than some of the others uh and then we kind of screwed up helping them with the track and we got the white line a little too far over so we was actually going about 325 because we was going beside the sand pile yeah, yeah. that was that's one of the things that we we discussed that we were going to have to remedy a little bit to Samara back up. Keep them. That was our learning moment. Nice. I think we're going to try something at my show. We were talking before the the show started that I've been wanting to try for a while. I think we're going to try it at my show at least on Friday night. We're probably going to do it on Thursday night too, just to try a run. But I've got a loader, and we're going to put everybody in the sled. We're not going to let you back up to the sled. Um, I think that'll save a tremendous amount of time. I don't care if your stuff's running when we drag you to the sled, but we're going to do it just like indoors. Because the way our track's set up, if I don't, I've had a problem in the past with, with too many trackers in front of the crowd. And if I can stack you down there with a the loader and then pick you up, put you in the sled with the loader, I think we're going to save time and we're going to say we're going to improve the crowd experience by time and viewing um I'm just going to try something outdoors i, I think uh i think it's going to make a considerable difference and time wise it's being the show up if we could put you in the sled rather than you go up there and spend 45 seconds backing up you know, i've wondered how long it'd take before somebody did that outdoors uh, you know. we've got an organization out here that's going to try that this summer too I heard that at Chipewana. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bring somebody in for I think the majority of their pull uh, of mm -hmm. their of their events, and come hell or high water, we will back you into the sled ourselves, and we will do it faster than you can. Yeah, and, it's, it's a good idea. I just yeah. well, we're gonna try. And, yeah. Well, look look at what we do in January at Tucker Show. Yep. How I mean. I was sitting in the bean line at Cargill at Lafayette and went through the results and added up how many, how much stuff we ran down the track in each session. And our two slowest sessions was Thursday afternoon and Saturday night. And knowing what time we started, pretty much being on time in each of the sessions and remembering what time we got done, we still averaged four minutes total as a whole the whole weekend for, for those two sessions and the other four sessions we averaged three and a half minutes per That's and I had awesome. people, and I had people telling us that they had stopwatches stop just doing what we was doing during the show and it was averaging between two and a half and 245 per uh -huh. year on that track can confirm that uh, yeah you guys run a fast show there. I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, one of those finally, I mean, it's, well, to steal a term from John Deere, fine-tuned perfection. So, and I know some of you guys aren't Deere fans. You know, Zach just died a little inside, and that's okay. I, I, I wanted that. I wanted to do that. And, and I wanted to see, you know, Joe's blood boil a little bit. You, you will get not a, deliver. You will get a bill. You will get a bill in the mail from down here for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Well. I yeah. I mean, you know, the first couple of years. Well, the first year we was all feeling each other out because I feel people were there and nobody really knew knew us and you know everybody was kind of starting to get that you know feel each other out of what we was doing and what how we fit in with them and the second year that worked a little bit better but the last two years 
smooth as can be. For for a group of people who come together once, maybe twice a year, we all work really well together. And you it's gotta, obnoxious how well that group really, yes. how well and you guys you, all you gotta, work together. You got to give kudos to Clint Tucker for putting that all together. Yep. Yep. He really does. I mean, he he figured out how. I mean, it's just like how he handicaps classes and you know gets. I mean. If, if he really wanted to, I'm pretty sure he could make a garden tractor run with a light pro. <laughs> Do not give him any ideas. <laughs> oh, I already, I'm sure I already did. Tucker, if you're if you're watching. Well, we went, we went somewhere. He's part of the time, and he ran, I don't know, he run light pros and unlimited super. I mean, he had everything in one class. I don't remember. It was before we had the tractor. We went somewhere one time and seen him and he won his shows, and he had everything together. Wow. Yeah. The, yeah, we run everything. No, so we're going to give that a whirl. Say that again? We're going to give that a whirl with my show and see if it works. We might, sh we might shit can it halfway through the show, but we're going to try it. My guess, my guess is that it's going to work, and it's going to work really well. It'll take it'll take a class to get the hang of it, and you know, then yeah, we're we're off to the races. You know, and for you guys, and for for you guys, with some of your shows being kind of long, because you do end up with you know thirty five hot farms. Yeah, it's only maybe it's only taking fifteen seconds a piece, you know, as a net, you know, gain. But multiply that by one hundred and twenty hooks or whatever, you know, that's right. that's that's a that's a real number. That's a real time savings, and you know, I mean, we're all kind of shooting for the same kind of three to four hour show before you start losing people, you know, and they start burying their heads in their cell phones, um, yeah. you know. Everything, you, anything that we can do to speed up that show and improve that fan experience, that's a net benefit for all of us. You know? So. I don't know. We're, got, we're, uh, we're rolling right up here on uh, about two hours. And, you know, like I told uh, the Keels, that's, you know, two hours of your life or an hour of your life that you'll never get back. And we appreciate that. Um, anybody got uh, anybody in the audience got any questions that they want to throw in quick put those guys in the hot seat a little bit where's the helmet <laughs> you had one job honey one job and I'll get you guys a, I'm going to get some fire uh ZZ, Jake that owns ZZ Diesel, he's got an in-house um, graphic guy, and I'm gonna get he's gonna get some flyers made. Ruse and Charles, I might hit you up for some an app. Whoever's got some decent pictures of of mine and Joe, and maybe four one or two that runs with us, um, and he's gonna make up a flyer for this shootout thing with all the specific stuff on it, so we can start circulating it around. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. And if we don't, and if we don't, uh, you know, Adam's got them. Yep. So, so who are the big sponsors? Let's hit those guys before we let you guys off the hook. Pimp your sponsors. Who makes this thing go around? Uh, obviously Brad Hal Ford. Yep. Uh, Paddock's Record Service and Heavy Hauling out of Westfield, Indiana. Uh, thanks, Adam. I will, buddy. Evolution Outdoor uh, or and Stutzman Power Sports together is is helping us out a lot. Uh, That's your place Bexseed. to get a bad boy mower, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Beck Seed has been a sponsor for several years, and uh, Liquid Tube has, like I said, just come on board this year. And some of our smaller sponsors into Overmeyer Dino Service. Jay's Diesel Performance, DNA Suter Excavating, uh, CM Pulling Tires, Doug McKinley Repair, 
McManus Insurance, Wipeout Enterprises, Course of Data Acquisition, Hometown Diesel, and now ZZ Diesel also. They're, they're the ones that help us do what we do. Awesome. We can't awesome. forget our, we can't forget our promoters either. Yes. And you know, not just saying it because I am on the Joe's been there, he's promoted. You know, if if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the organization we do, them putting the, the trust in us to bring a show to them. Well, you guys have delivered. I mean, we've seen the videos. I mean, you know, Adam's Adam Tiff's videos, they've I mean they, they show off what your organization can do and so do Jeff's and you know there's and I'm sure there's others who have put out videos that are escaping me right now but I mean they do a good job of showing off what those what those hooks are like and and it's hard to it's hard to replicate that that kind of you know that kind of exposure and you know I know that those promoters work hard for you and you know that's that's awesome I'm glad to hear that you guys remember them and uh, you know, yeah, show we, a little love. We, We've had we've had very good luck with our our social media people. Obviously, Adam Wilson, Bill Diesel Mafia, coming to a lot of our events. Like I said, Jeff Shanks, Dipstick Productions, Chuck Russell, Chuck's videos, all all have been there and videoed a lot of our stuff. Uh, you know, my wife doing the Facebook Live stuff. Yep. Uh, some of the photographers we've had over time. Charles and I, we I shared shared a, a video with him to to watch. We had a guy, um, he's since moved on from from being a photographer, but there's a video on YouTube from the Peru Bowl where he's standing three feet inside the white line as single inch mods are taking off on the starting line, and he doesn't step off to the other side of the white line until you're just about on top of it. Now it is a big wide track at Peru, but, and this was several years ago before we knew better than to say, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. But Charles seen the video, I got it. What the fuck? That was pretty much my response, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so, just, you know, it just sounds had, like had, somebody with a demonstrated pattern of doing things like this. I think I know who we're talking about. Uh, probably not. He's in, he's in real estate now. Um, he was actually my engine builder's brother and he only did this for a few. He, I think he came and took pictures of us for about two or three years back at that time. Um, and then, and then he got into drag racing again and had a son, got married and had a son. And then that kind of killed his extra time to come to be a photographer. Oh, that'll happen. You'll have that once in a while. So hey, where are you next? Go ahead. When's your first, or where's your first poll you're going to this summer? That's a damn good question that I don't have an answer to yet. I'm not sure where, I'm not sure where my first poll is going to be. Um, Cody, do you know where, where our first event is? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know it's a bouncing ball because your job's getting busy and, and me, my schedule's always kind of yeah hither and thither and yawn, but honestly, I couldn't tell you because I yeah, know so we'll get back to you where I'd like to be. Uh, June 8th is uh, not going to happen at this point. So I'll be in Arkansas. Yeah, I may have a, a, a scheduling conflict as well. So that's a bummer. Um, but on the other side uh, of that scheduling conflict is something that that is pretty cool. So, but um, oh, we have a video. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go. He didn't have to run for that one. Like I said, it, it is a nice white track at Peru. So you. That's true. He does have some room to work there. Are we still talking about the flag man or no the guy right there <laughs> taking the pictures inside the chalk line jeez oh, oh that's crazy adam why don't you have balls like that i've done well not inside the white line but i've stood on the white line 
I, I will tell you, I shot uh, Windsor, Colorado. Um, I shot a pole that has a very narrow grassway between two tracks. That's a whole different level that you don't really think about until you shoot in between two tracks. That's a, that's awesome. It's a rush. It's it like is yes, all it that. is. I but love it. The worst problem was is there was also a photographer from the event, like I don't know if you call it event sponsorship or the, the people are putting the event on, and she'd never been to a track pole, period. And she's in front of me, and I'm just like, you kind of almost have to look out for her because she doesn't know what can or could happen. So you're sitting there like, <laughs> somebody please take a screenshot of that, please. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Adam, enjoy the couch. Yeah. Well, I believe, I believe from last year at Winamac, she oh, man. did. He did. A thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Adam Adam made it funny there, but, but we know for damn sure that that's true because we've seen the video proof. <clears throat> Uh, this track, I just this I have this. at Peru has had some interesting passes made down it over our time of being there. Oh, there's Richard. Yeah, there's my there's my old mod. I mean, single engine mods is one thing, but I don't think I would shoot a diesel super or any super stock class that close. I mean, I don't think I would shoot a light pro to like I mean, ripping down the track. Yeah. I mean. They normally have better range than that if you're that close. What's like the guy using like a, I had this complete mental image of Christy hitting him like Lawrence Taylor. Using like a freaking 35 millimeter pancake lens or something. You know, gotta get closer. A lot higher than that, guys. Jeez. Yeah, it's well, like that day when the only thing that you brought was your fish eye. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to make this work? Yeah. Well, I'm going to stand on the tractor. That's almost what it's like. He does not yeah. have a zoom lens, and like, yeah, you know, <laughs> he's leaning into it too. Like, that's funny. Um, you know, props to that dude. You well, know, it makes that's... you different. Oh, I shoot tractor pulls with a mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hilarious. Yeah. Well, I have a video on my phone that cannot leave my phone, but it is from me shoved in the corner of a cab of a semi with my leg shoved against a firewall, sitting on, the sitting on my sitting on my leg, riding, and at about 150 foot, it splits the block and blows the hood forward. Oh my! Now I did have a helmet on and a fire jacket. Which makes it totally safe. Right. Well, right. Yeah, because that protects your balls and your legs and extremities. Yeah, back before we knew better, too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this was a non sanctioned part of the yes. pull. It 100%. was not part of IPL pull that night. Mm -hmm. We were done there with. That's Our true. signs were off the track. That you know of. Right. Well, we're not going to ask you to take the, take the video off your phone, so there well, will be no proof. The, the owner of the owner of the truck said that never leaves your phone, but send me a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, because of it's course. cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'll get pretty ballsy at some brush poles and stuff like that without you know a lot of signage around and stuff. But yeah, anywhere else, I just kind of play by the rules, you know. Zoom's your best friend for yep. that stuff. Yep. Um, we've, we've, I mean, we've, we've put Tiffany on the pedestal. Somebody want to queue up or Adam, you want to send me the link or send, send Charles the link to the video because they need to, the people need to see this. <laughs> and then we can, we can probably call it quits on that note and, and just, you know, I was actually trying to think the last time that I seen Zach pull outside was like. Marion, Ohio, like 2014 or something. That was when we were over there at Lenders that night. Oh, you've Lenders seen it. You've seen him pull outdoors. That's cool. Once. Yeah, I've Why never. You? you were at the progress show that year, weren't you? 
Uh, uh, where I in in, in, in Illinois? No, uh -uh. I, I was there were. the year before that, and at that point it was um, light supers, four uh, ones, eighty fives. Yeah, we didn't I have. Even tell you what plethora of stuff we ran that night up there in Decatur. There we go. Charles, there it is in the comments. Yep, I'm on it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I can take this that is back. A great, this is a great video. Zach pulled that Toma one year. Yes, yes, we yeah. did go to Toma. We could have the Hazes. I was there that year. Yeah. Was, oh, that, the year that, the um, was that the year that uh, they pulled so late at night? and The super farm blew apart? Yeah. And, and at 3 in the you're, morning? You're yeah, and your dumbass had gone to bed. I was in bed, and then I woke up, and I had 85 okay. messages on my phone. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't remember if it's the whole thing or if i got to fast-forward to a spot. you got to fast-forward. It was in the light letter pro class. Listen to her, and, and while he's fast-forwarding. Oh, there it is. Just, there just, it is. just read <laughs> Tiffany's ex explanation. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he legit parked it in the booth with the girls. Uh -huh. <laughs> The only way that could have been better is if it was like a white 2180. I was really hoping when I saw that for the first time that she like walked up and just gave him a high five and was on camera. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, thanks for the thanks for the content, my dude. Right? <coughs> yeah. That was Adam, that if you're was free that if, Adam, if you're free that weekend of our deal, come out too. What weekend is that again? I know you said, but I couldn't read. I can't remember. 12, 13, 14 of July. 12, 13, 14. I don't believe we have. That might be the week after Alexander. Adam's comment. We had a safety class since then. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is that she didn't pass. <laughs> and that's why we love you, Tiff. I'll bring her a hard hat next time I see her. It'll be fine. That'll be awesome. Cause I know they both got vests. Yeah, I got I got two poles that week on. Well okay. I thought it was a week before. Cause this year's a leap year, isn't it? Or Yes. There was, so everything's different freaking this year. Everything yep. all changed around. Damn it, Bobby. What the hell? Well, if you can find a replacement I will tell you that I've seen a picture of uh, Zach's liquor cabinet, and you would be suitably impressed. Do I need to make a walk downstairs? No, 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 no. No. Did you know that Zach was a bourbon nerd? I did not. I did not. See, there you go. Yeah. There's and here reason. I am drinking water. I got you, Ryan. I got you a bottle. Did you really? Oh, you were the man. We had four left. I went and grabbed them. Love it. Thank you so much. It seems that there's um, I've, I've said this to Zach before and we've talked about it, but uh, um, anybody who's watching in the comments, um, any of you guys like bourbon nerds? Not like I drink shots of Jack. I'm talking yeah. like I enjoy bourbon or whatever. Um, it seems like the longer that we're in this sport, maybe this is just kind of the trend because bourbon is hot or getting hot right now. Um, there's a bunch a of, of underground. bourbon nerds now. Yeah, a lot of underground bourbon nerds. Uh -huh. You, you wow. wouldn't think. It's you like a cool. Ryan, our little local liquor, our little local liquor store there in Greentown. He's he just went down today to he was down somewhere doing another barrel pick today. Nice. And they've done a, they got a huge bourbon selection now. Yeah. Nice. Like, I just found out that um, Josh Blackburn is a bourbon nerd. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that either. Yeah. I learned that, um, I learned that, I don't know, a week and a half ago. What do I got? So. 
We got all kinds of stuff. What, do you, what, what, what is this? The satellite bourbon cabinet or bar? No, all this is going to Ohio. Oh. Wow. We got Happy or Tenure. Nice. Rock Hill Farms. You know. No, this is all. This I'm just a mule. So I got a lot, but I don't know Happy yet. Yeah, I'm just a mule, so we we do some horse trading and stuff like that. So all this, I got a whole bot. There's 14 bottles down here going to Ohio next week. Huh? Jeez, nice. We got a big sports day in Indiana tomorrow, guys. What? Uh, who's playing? Purdue plays in the Sweet 16 tomorrow. Your Iowa State's playing right now. Yeah, I know. They I know. They're, they're uh, down in the corner. Don't worry. <laughs> Cody, Cody, what's the score? Uh, it's not pretty. It's 21, oh. to, 12. 21 to 12. We're losing. Oh. We, 21 to 12? Yeah, we had four, 14 oh. possessions. We only scored two points off of that. Not to get like sports related, but. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's no good. All right. And you need a fainting goat patch. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> He'll, like I, I, I don't know. I, so I, I went to the Big Twelve game. My uncle and I went to the Big Twelve championship game in Kansas City, and we went to, uh, we went to uh, Omaha and watched them play there. I would have rather played um, Ducoin versus Illinois, um, but yeah, Illinois is pretty tough. So they're tough. Yeah. Incoming so. text messages from Leroy in three. Dude. Oh, I, I said I already sent him a picture when we watched Illinois played after us. So I, I sent him a picture. I said I'm cheering on Illinois, even though I we know we're probably going to play him next. So, but uh, yeah, they've they've got a tough team. But yeah, that's going on now. Lovely. Fun fact: Final Four tickets were cheaper than going to Boston. Did find that? They, they still are. Yeah. Oof. Where is Final Four this year? Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. And my uncle's youngest daughter goes to school in Phoenix, so he was already looking up tickets like, oh, we could go down there and see her and go to the Final Four. Your uncle's like crazy basketball nerd, isn't he? We we get on radio or, or adventures. Is it, or is it that, or is it is it, is it crazy sports guy, or is it no. Iowa State? We, we just we get on crazy adventures. We took off uh, in 2019. Um, COVID year, you know, we took off and we both had vacation days to burn. So we took off with no plans and we drove down to Texas for the Big 12 uh, um, championship game where we played uh, Oklahoma yeah, football at AT&T Stadium. That was mm -hmm. weird. I mean, they, they legit had every, if you had like two tickets and then there was a gap between you and the people next to you, they had like taped off the chairs so you couldn't like sit next to people. It was, it was really odd. Like they'd gone. That's how we got all the polling in 2020. We taped seats off between people. Did really? you really? No. no, no. I was gonna I say, like that was, a, that was a that was a new one for me. Well, I mean, uh, stranger things have happened. You know, I mean, fortunately, we didn't have to we didn't have to do that in Iowa. But I mean, I know that we had to expand the bleachers. I I remember when uh, this was when I was helping Rockwell. North Iowa Nationals do their show. Um, they had to bring in, I want to say it was a, an extra section of bleachers so that if people wanted to social distance, I can't believe I just said that phrase. I was up uh, there that year. At Rockwell. That's right. You were. Yeah. You were that, up. I were, love that, though. That was that that's, was really cool. that's when Rhett's, that's when the yeah. pump started to yeah. run away. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Then so, we went to the IH Museum after the next day. That was fun. Or, you yeah. actually went? Yeah, we went over there. Did you? That really oh, cool. that's that was awesome. Cool. That was really I'm cool. I'm glad. Yeah, we got to check that out before it closed down. So That's awesome. Did you get to meet uh, yeah. Jerry? Yeah, him, yeah, him and his wife both. Yeah, they were, we were sitting there talking to them for a little bit. Yeah, ah, that's yeah, that was cool. They are they are some of the nicest. They were some of the mm -hmm. nicest, sweetest people in the world. Yeah, yeah, it was. They both and were, yeah. it didn't matter what color that. It, it didn't matter what color you you rooted for. Um, you walk into that place, you belong to him, and and the the 
the energy and, and the electricity that just the passion that, that pushed him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't get away from it. And you became, for that 45 minutes or an hour that you were in that building, you became a Red fan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it had a lot of cool stuff in there, I will say. I mean, it was, yeah, it was really cool to walk through and see all that. So I got one piece of that, of that cool stuff before that museum closed. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, uh, actually, it's over in the next room. Um, there was a, a book. You've probably seen those red tractor coffee book, uh, coffee table books, mm -hmm. Joe. You, if you don't have them, you need to get them. Um, I probably have one. You would know if you did. I mean, it's they're they're real pretty. They're and they're, you know, ten inches by ten inches. They're big coffee table books, and pretty thick. But a lot of Jerry's tractors were used in the photography of those, and um, Lee Clancher gave him a. Um, very limited edition version of the of one of those books that his tractor was on the cover of and uh it sat in this you know this quarter sawn oak like shadow box and it sat on the wall um for as long as jerry had it and uh i did some i did a little bit of writing to kind of tell some of the stories of farm all land and during the during the auction to kind of help, you know, push some, some bidders and viewers and so on and so forth. And, um, Jerry asked me, you know, he said, what do I owe you for this? I said, I don't want your money. Your money's no good to me. I said, I want that book and I'll be damned. He gave it to me. We were, we were talking to him there before we, you know, took off. And so we were there for rock up bowl and everything. So we talking about tractor pulling. He was telling some history of that. Yeah, it was really cool. It was a really cool experience to check that out for, you know, shut down and everything. So yeah, so. the last um, the last day I saw him was um, probably uh, three years ago. I mean, it could have been three years ago today. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was late March, and I went out there, and it was the day that uh, it was one of the days when he when a lot of the tractors that sold at the auction got picked up like mm -hmm. an abnormally big number and and some of them were um some of the ones that he had a lot of fondness for um and he had to watch them leave and it bummed him up i mean he treated those he treated those tra tractors like his children mm -hmm. um and uh so he went home and he was kind of bummed and i got there um i got there that afternoon and he was still back home with joyce having lunch and and mike gerard was there cataloging some stuff for the final auction he's like Ryan I don't know how much fun he's gonna be he's he's had a rough morning just he's had to watch say goodbye for the last time to a lot of really nice tractors that he really loved he said mm -hmm. you know I don't know what I don't know what this is gonna be like and I said that's fine that's fine I just want to you know shake his hand one more time and and thank him for what he did and yada 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 mm -hmm. and sure enough he came back and he wasn't he wasn't in a great mood. I mean, he, he was just, you could tell he was kind of, oh, yeah. he was yeah. heavy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, I started asking questions about the stuff that was there. Just, you know, the tractors that were left that still hadn't been sold. And there were a few that he really liked. And, and uh, just for one brief moment, I got Jerry all to myself and I got that twinkle back in his eye and that smile. And he's like, and I, I will never forget this as long as I live. He uh, he looks at me and he and he kind of winks and gets this kind of smile on his face. He says, "Come with me. I want to show you something. I'll never forget that as long as I live." And he went and showed me one of his favorite tractor ride tractors, and it was a 560 that he put a gas uh, 345 V8 in, and you know it was all chromed out, and it was I mean. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I love you, Jerry. If you hear this, I'm sorry, but it looked like you went to AutoZone and, and AutoZone exploded on your tractor. It was not a good look. But he loved that tractor for tractor rides. And uh, he went and showed me, showed that to me and took me all around it and, you know, all the, all the details and told me a few stories about taking that out for a ride and yada, yada, yada. That was one of the best days of my professional career. I had so much fun and 
the last thing he did was um, he signed the back of that shadow box um, with a sharpie and and handed it to me. Said thank you, I appreciate it. And we made a promise to to uh, hang out at Tractor Pulls that summer because he said I'm finally going to have my weekends back. Yeah, going through my photos, but there's one of the. Uh, the camera, we'll see the camera, but well, oh, here, hang on, hang on, we'll fix that. Um, there, shove it up against the uh, the, the camera. I remember those. Yep. Yeah, it, it was really, it was awesome. To, and all the toys and everything, I mean, of course, you know, I'm a toy guy, and seeing all the toys and talking about that, that was really, really cool to experience. So. I remember talking to you about that auction. Did you ever end up with anything out of that or no? I no, know. I, I bid it on some stuff, uh, but no, I was trying to get that truck with the sled. You know, so you to, oh, uh, yes, I remember that one. Yep. That went for big money, like the last couple here recently. So. Yeah, the, they're not ever going to go for small money. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not no, those. No, no but... No, that was that was probably the the most fun I've ever had uh, at Farm All Land. Was was that day when sixty or seventy percent of of the things that were so special about Farm All Land were all gone. I mean, it's weird to see, it was weird to see that place with a lot of empty space. Uh, right. Yeah. But uh, it was it was it was pretty neat. Joe, did you ever get to go to that? Yeah, it was once. Yeah, that was it was fun, and that was the that was the one promise that I that I regret. I never got to keep with with Jerry. I promised him that if I ever saw him at a tractor pull, I would put down my I would when I saw him I would put down my camera and I would go and I would sit and I would sit with him and Joyce and watch watch class. And we would talk tractor pulling until that class was over. Mm -hmm. And uh, he never got to another tractor pull. No. I don't think, I, I don't even think that he made Bowling Green that year. No, we talked about Bowling Green. Yeah, Bowling that Green. was yeah. always one of his yeah. favorite. That I mean, he lived yeah. for Bowling Green. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, no, the value in that, uh, of, of that museum had nothing to do with the, of, with the, the metal that was inside it. Yeah, it was it, the value in that uh, of that museum was the passion of the man that ran it. But we could all be so lucky to have a passion like that, and I think we all do. So anyway, now that we've I've waxed way too philosophical. <laughs> yeah. But anyone, anyway, anyway. Um, I don't know that I see any questions here. Um, any of you guys have any questions left, or should we let these nice people go home? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Guys, thank you. We appreciate thank it, you. even if you didn't bring Next the cool person. helmet. <laughs> Next time. Next yeah, time. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yep. We are very much looking forward to seeing you guys this summer with um, with no smoke tubes. Um, and uh, you know, as soon as I get the flyer down, I'll get it to you guys. Awesome, yeah, yeah please do I'll share the hell out of it for you guys. You know, we can do that. So, all right, all right, thank you. Well, thanks, hang guys. out, thanks, guys. We can end the stream here and we can BS afterwards if uh, if you guys want to stay on for a minute or uh, we can call it good. But right, folks good. at home watching, take care, we'll catch up to you soon. See you guys. Yeah. See you guys. See you. See you, See you man.